All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. It's 10 o'clock. Um, so everyone, welcome to the Jamstack NG Angular and Scully workshop led by Aaron Frost. Um, this is going to be a really good workshop, so I'm excited for you all to, to see it. Um, if For those who have just jumped in, uh, you can use the git clone commands that are on Aaron's screen right now to clone the, the project and the API that we'll be using. Um, if you don't have SSH set up to clone, then you'll need to use the HTTPS uh, URL that's on GitHub. Um, and Aaron will show you that right there. So um, you can go to Aaron's GitHub, Aaron Frost, all one word, and then the donut store is, um, is the repository. Before we get started, there's just a few things we like to go over to help you know how to make the most of the workshop. The first thing is that we want to emphasize the code of conduct. I'll post the link in the chat one more time. Um, that's, uh, that's the code of conduct that you would have seen when you signed up for your ticket or if you've been to the normal or to the in-person ng-conf in the past. Um, online or in-person ng-conf believes that the Angular community should follow the, the standards and the code of conduct. Uh, this includes using kindness, respect, and clean language in the chat and Q&A. We will not condone any sexist, racist, or derogatory, or politically charged conversations of any kind. We've had problems with those in the past, and we've removed those people from, um, from the workshop or from the, from the conference. So uh, make sure that when you're chatting or you're asking questions, that you keep things respectful and, um, and kind, and, and then we won't have any issues. Um, if, you, if, uh, if there is a problem, you'll be given one warning and then you'll be kicked out of the workshop if it continues. You'll get a full refund, but you won't be allowed to come back on any condition. Um, so let's talk about how you can be a part of the workshop and interact, interact with uh, Aaron while he's giving it. Now, uh, the first thing is that you can post in the chat. I will be, I'll manage the chat and I'll make sure that um, Aaron uh, knows if there's any questions or, or issues that we have as we're going through it, but you can raise your hand, you can put stuff in the chat. Um, if, if it's a question that's directly related to what we're doing, like at a, at a given moment, put it in the chat and uh, we can work through it. If it's a more of an overarching question about Scully or, um, or a question that you have, then you can put it in the Q&A and then um, every so often we'll stop and we'll answer questions from the Q&A. Um, so those are two ways that you can ask your questions. Um, and if you want to, if you have a, another issue, you can raise your hand and I can message you um, and we can, I can help you that way as well. Um, we will take um, five to 10 minute breaks every 60 to 90, 90 minutes, depending on when Aaron is ready to take a break. Um, and during those breaks, you can grab a snack or use the restroom, but we'll also have fun polls that go. So when we start a break, I'll, I'll put up a poll and you can answer it and you can answer it throughout the whole next section. And then we'll show the results of the poll at the end or at the start of the next break. Uh, so everyone can, can participate that. Um, uh, any other, or the last thing is that, uh, the workshop is being recorded and you'll get access to the recording in a few weeks. You'll get an email with information on how to access that. Um, so without further ado, I will turn the time over to Aaron and, um, and I'm excited for you all. I've used Scully a little bit and, uh, so I'm excited. I think you're all going to like this. Thanks, Preston. Uh, I appreciate everyone for being here. Um, one of the people on the panel, his name's Jorge. He's like um, my my partner in crime. Jorge and I, we we work on Scully together. We're both part of like that core team that, that builds Scully. And so that's that's going to be what we're showing off today is one of the tools to do Jamstack with Angular. It's called Scully. <clears throat> I want to do one last opportunity. Anyone who wants to join the panel, you can see Condre, Jorge, Preston, and Scott are on our panel. Anyone who would like to join, please like raise your hand. Um, it all, all, all it allows you to do is just kind of give verbal confirmation for me as I'm teaching like, okay, yep, yeah, that's like, I'm just making sense. It helps me know I didn't cut out like my audio is not gone. 
Um, I'm not like driving off uh, the ranch as far as my explanations and everything. So, um, so yeah, anyone who wants to join, just put in the chat, hey, I'm, I'm, I want to join the panel or feel free to um, just raise your hand and we'll have Preston um, put you over into the chat. Anyway, uh, before we get going, I'll give you, I'm going to give you some time later on to clone these repos, but there's two repos that you're going to want to clone today. One's called the donut store and the other one's the donut store API. Um, so if you, if you clone those, that'll make the rest of the, of the, uh, workshop go a bit easier. Okay. So if you just run git clone, and then once you're done cloning them, if you run NPM install, that'll install your packages. Um, the install does bring down, um, Chromium. It brings in Puppeteer, which which has Chromium, which means um, the download, the install can take a second. Though though these are simple packages, the the install can take a second. Is all I'm trying to say. So, so yeah. And Jorge just put into the chat the um, the links to those repos if you want to go there and click on the um, the the clone commands. Anyway, so yeah. All right. Um, no. Next slide. Cool. So today we're talking about jam stacking. We're jam stacking. Uh, as a as a team, we're gonna do Angular plus Scully, and we're gonna we're gonna teach everyone how to do Jamstack. Um, a lot of people in the Angular community haven't done Jamstack before. Can I get some hand raising going on about I've done it or haven't done it? Like, just give me a I have or haven't done Jamstack before. Maybe Preston, get a poll, throw up a poll while I'm presenting. Let's see if we can't get like find out what percentage of people have done it or haven't done it before because it's. It's not new. It's it's certainly not new around the world. It is kind of new to the Angular community, though. We not a lot of people have been doing it for very long, and uh, something like Scully that makes it easy hasn't really been around for too long. So, um, so yeah, uh, that's that's what we're going to be talking about today is how to do jams. Like now, other JavaScript communities know how to do this. Um, we are slightly behind the curve. But um, now is a good time to learn. And I'm going to try and explain the peelers of the Jamstack. And then we're going to spend the rest of this workshop going through uh, how to do some of the Jamstacky things with Scully. Okay. Now, there's going to be lots of questions. And I hope that you feel comfortable asking them. Jorge and I are going to try and create an environment where everyone can feel safe to ask as many questions as they want. And we want to make it feel welcoming where everyone can learn and really come to terms with what is the Jamstack and how it can help you be a better Angular developer. Okay. Um, so yeah. Anywho, let's, uh, let's kind of jump into this. I'm Aaron Frost. One thing about me, everyone calls me Frosty. Okay. You call me Aaron, you call me Frosty. I'm an identical twin. So I actually also answer to the name Joel, just because my whole life people like brought one birthday present to the birthday party for two kids. Cause their parents are horrible people, right? And so, like, I, I answer to Joel, um, and then there's probably a lot of bad words I would also turn my head and look if you said, right? So, um, so anyway, that's who I am. I love the Angular community. Um, you could say that I stumbled upon it almost a, almost a decade ago now. So, um, so yeah, uh, it. I just kind of actually ran, ran across it, and then my friend... Joe and my friend Kip and a couple other people, we we decided it might be fun to do an an ng conf or an, an Angular conference. Um, so we decided we would try it, and then we accidentally started the world's biggest <laughs> Angular conference. We started ng conf, and so that's that's kind of how I I got a bit involved in the community is by accidentally starting a really big event and. When we started it, we learned a whole lot of things. Um, one of the things that I've learned the most about doing an event is it's really important to make sure people feel welcome and safe. And so it's important to me that everyone in this workshop feels safe and in welcomed and invited to participate and to learn and uh, to ask your questions so that this can be a place that that everyone feels like, man, this was really a good workshop. I, I got out of here what I was hoping to get out of here. So let's focus on that for the next few hours. All right. So I'm going to talk about a few Scully announcements real quick. Uh, and before I dive in, now I want to say there's a new plugin that we're going to show off today. There's a new integration for Scully. It's called the Critical CSS plugin. If you're not aware, among the many things we're going to talk about today, is 
we're going to be mainly focused on making your app insanely fast. Okay. Like, like faster than the best. I want uh, whoever you think the best angular developer on earth is whoever you think that is, whatever their name or names are, they could not do an app as fast and angular as you can with a jam stack. And they, that's the same for react. That's the same for view. You cannot make an app as fast with a framework as you can by using the framework with the Jamstack. The Jamstack is just going to make it faster. So I mean, anyway, among those things that we're going to be talking about with speed is we, we just added a critical CSS plugin. Now, this is insane. Um, your app can now load and the user can see it without having to download all your CSS. It's really, really cool. So your CSS will get downloaded after the fact. Um, it's a huge optimization. Imagine if you have 50K of CSS, but you only need five for the user to see your main home screen. Well, instead of making them download all 50K, they're only going to download five now, and then we're going to defer load the rest of it. So that that's out. That's a new plugin. We're gonna I'm going to teach you how to use that today. So it's going to be really cool. Um, we have a new feature that, like, you got to watch us on Twitter. Go, go to Twitter and find Scully.io. Um, because we are, it's so close. Like it works. We actually have a few people that are using the, this build cache, but what it does is, so I'm going to ask you to imagine real quick, imagine with me, your website, let's, let's just pretend you have 500 unique pages on your website. Okay. L most of us have more than that, but just 500 unique pages. Um, I want you to imagine when Scully builds your site and pre-renders all 500 of those pages, um, every single one of those pages is going to make a lot of the exact same calls to the backend. It's going to request the same JavaScript. It's going to request a lot of the same images, the same CSS, and it's going to even make a lot of the same API requests. The build cache is going to speed up your build because any of those calls that are shared across all of your pages are going to get cached, which means your build's going to speed up like insane. And so um, not only is your build going to speed up, but you're also not going to continually call and hammer your backend. That's a big problem for a lot of people is they just sit there. And then when they do a build, it just hammers and hammers and hammers the backend. And the backend starts to think, are we being DDoS? Like, why, why am I getting so many page requests? And it's because Scully is trained to do, to do its job as fast as it can, which means it's going to load all your pages as fast as possible and your, your backend can freak. Anyway, so we have this build cache coming out. So um, we're going to do, we're going to show it off a bit more. It's, it's still like, I would say alpha, which is why we haven't really pushed it out, but really soon it's going to be ready for beta and, and, and it will, it will be something that everyone can use and start getting uh, the benefits from. And then we have an incremental rebuilds that's coming on the back end of that. Um, this just makes it so that when you, um, the data your, but your website's based on when the data changes, you don't have to rebuild all of the pages, just the pages that depend on that data. So yeah, really, really, really cool feature coming out there. Um, additionally, we're going to, um, some people may be like totally aware of some of the vernacular I'm going to throw out there today. And if you are, you'll understand we're going to be adding, uh, it's a thing that I didn't add on this slide. We're going to be adding um, support so that Scully can run a universal app as well. So anyone who's excited about the speed of Universal, but the features in Scully, you're going to get that really, really soon as well. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, Scott's saying, yes, the build times now. Um, there, there, There's not a lot of um, overlap kind of to Scott's point with what with what Scully's doing. It's, it's a completely different build system. Like it's based on post- Narwhal is built on the results of like your pre-build, like the assets before they get put through the build. And Scully is kind of based on the assets after your build. And so it's it's a bit of a different dependency tree. But with this cache, we actually made it really, really simple to know which of your views depend on the same data. So it's really, really exciting. Anyway, um, so those are just some of those features coming out. And um, yeah, so let's talk about, let me, let me dive into the Jamstack, okay? Um, all right, by the way, Preston, I know not everyone answered that poll, but can you go ahead and finish it so we can see the results? What were those resis, bro? I want to see. 
Okay. One, one, one person has done it. Scott, are you the one? I'm guessing that maybe it's Scott. Okay. Uh, no, not. A, okay, great. All right. So, um, so yeah, most people haven't. So this is good. So we got a lot of, that's good for me to know, Hey, who are we, who are we talking to? So I'm going to keep my explanations for the first time Jamstack user. So let's dive into it. <clears throat> and this is a, this is a quote. I say a lot, nothing will make your angular project as fast as using Scully and embracing Jamstack. And um, I hope that by the time the day's over, you'll understand why this isn't hyperbole, hyperbole. Like th this isn't just some like grandiose claim. And, and I'm just some tool author who thinks that my, my tool's better than anything else. Like, I hope that I can explain by the time the day's over why even a rudimentary Jamstack app, it will be faster than your Angular app would have been by default. Okay, so I'm going to try, I have some slides here that will try and explain some of this. And then most of the time today will be spent like putting in practice what we're about to talk about. So we're going to, we're going to spend the next 15 minutes, maybe 20 conceptually talking about what Jamstack is and then conceptualizing inside of an Angular project. <clears throat> if there's any questions about the concepts, this is a really good time to ask those rather than like, eh, I'll wait till the code's happening. Like, Let's make sure we have some good dialogue right now. Lots of questions going on. If someone's like, I don't understand. That's a perfectly valid question. It means I need to do a better job at, at, at answering some questions. So let's, let's, let's make sure we ask over these next few minutes because once the slides go down, we're doing code for the rest of the day. So let, let's kind of dive in here. All right. So there's three really big pillars of the jam stack. All right. So the first one is caching. All right. Now, there's lots of calls that happen when your app turns on and we want to cache as many of those as we can. And using the Jamstack means that you are um, going to be caching some of your API calls, definitely lots of your assets, your indexed HTMLs are definitely going to be cached. And so when you're building your app, your web, your app for the Jamstack, <clears throat> you're building it in a way where you're caching a lot of stuff. Today, we're going to cache some of our API calls. We're going to make the call during the build. And in production, we're going to run with without making that call. It's just going to have the, it's already going to have cache it during the build. So our app is going to be able to run in production without depending on some of our API calls. It's going to be really cool. Another pillar of the Jamstack is pre-rendering. All right. Now, this is really important because every single one of us, the best of us who writes, you know, who writes the best Angular app, it's still, you know, several hundred kilobytes big, right? It's it, the, and the user, every one of us has seen an Angular app. The index HTML is literally empty. Like the body has only one thing in it. And until the JavaScript downloads, which is several hundred kilobytes, until that's down, the user's not going to see anything. So they're gonna if they're if they're on a slow mobile device, <clears throat> they see zero until they download at least 300k of JavaScript plus some CSS. Tack on top any API calls you're gonna make. Um, but with but with a Jamstack, you're gonna pre-render that view, which means when they come to the page, it's already gonna be rendered because you rendered it during the build time, and they're gonna see most of it. And that that pre-rendered HTML page that's gonna be somewhere between 15 and 30k. So they're going to get to see the app and they're not going to know the JavaScript hasn't downloaded. They, they have no concept of the JavaScript has or hasn't downloaded and is or isn't executing, right? All they know is the site. It looks like the site. So they're going to see the site in just a few kilobytes versus, you know, several hundred kilobytes before they see the website. So it's a much different user experience. The pre-rendering is one of the biggest pieces of really uh, fully executing your Jamstack. All right, so we have Tobias. Um, one thing that's going to help me, if you have questions, there's a Q&A tool inside the, the, um, the, the, uh, the, the Zoom. If you can throw your questions in the Q&A, it helps me so that I don't have to worry about missing stuff in the chat. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to try and pause real quick, though, because um, Yang says they want to be panelists, by the way. Oh, perfect. And then someone said, is this for static WE page, static web page? Yeah. So Rami, this is for static, turning your Angular app into a static page, but <clears throat> it's only static for a scotch of time. Yeah. 
Scotch is super non-specific because it's static, and but it is going to download your JavaScript, and then it's just your regular Angular app. So for a bit of time, it is static. It allows it to be crawled insanely fast. It allows your it's static long enough for your Lighthouse scores to go through the roof, and then your Angular will download in the background, and then it will turn on your Angular app. Okay, and we're gonna I'm gonna kind of show you through that. So yeah, it is for static websites. Um, Tobias, you had a question, um, but what if the call contains user-specific stuff? So, so Tobias is asking a fantastic question. Tobias says, hey, what if it's got data that's specific to this user? Beautiful question. Uh, I want you to imagine your web page. What, what portion of it can I pre-render? And what portion of it is only if, if Condra's coming to my website, it's just for her or Jorge comes and it's just for him, right? Like, what is the portion of that? I'm going to show you some tools to have a static page where we pre-render what we can, and then it's going to dynamically render the pieces that it can't pre-render, okay? This is going to be a better user experience than showing them nothing at first. They'll see maybe the out, maybe they'll see the header, the footer, and the sidebar with a loading GIF in the middle immediately so they know something's happened rather than just a, a blank screen while all the JavaScript down. So I'm going to show you some of this um, user specific or what we call dynamic loading. Um, we're going to, we're going to kind of stretch and bend and show you some of the ropes around that today. By the time the day's over Tobias, I think you'll understand, Oh, this is how I load in, in some contexts. I turn, I show some data here in another context. I don't show data here until until the JavaScript is loaded. So we're going to show you some of that today. Good question. Pavel says, does it mean that Jamstack is doing similar things as Angular Universal? <clears throat> it's doing something similar to Universal. Though I'm going to pause on the Universal question. <clears throat> and let me, I'm clearing my throat. Let me get a good throat clear real quick. Sorry. I'm, I'm like clearing into the mic. I pause. So I'm going to, Angular Universal is good at, server-side rendering that's called ssr scully is great at ssg static site generation okay so there's there's kind of two different games there all right if you're building a website that has a login in front so the user doesn't see anything until they're logged in that's that would be really good for ssr for server-side rendering. but if you're like viewing an e-commerce site where you want the user to see stuff immediately for seo purposes and a lot of purposes that's where static site generation is going to be really valuable so um eventually and like within six months scully will also serve the same purpose as angular universal meaning it will have a runtime server component so eventually should i use angular universal instead of scully that question will go away you'll just use scully but for now, um, there's still that SSR, SSG question. So good question. All right. Uh, next question, Tyler. If the Angular app we're serving is converted into an Angular element and put into legacy.net application, will this method work as well? So that's a really good question. Um, and the answer is yes. Um, it depends on if you're using full-on web components or if you're using like emulation mode on your Angular element. So if you're using that, then this should still work. Like it, it depends exactly on how you're doing it, your angular elements, but it, it should work. We have um, a client that's wor that's working in a hybrid state. They're really big. And I'm going to show you their site in a second. Big app, mo hundreds of millions of dollars of revenue a year. <clears throat> and they're hybrid angular, Jess and angular, you know, that would never work in a universal scenario, but that works perfect in Scully. Like it's flawlessly executing in Scully. So lots of really good, um, good answers going, uh, lots of really good solutions going on for big clients like that. Um, can Scully be used in PWA applications? The answer is yes. We have clients who have turned PWA on with Scully, making it even um, more efficient. And then Tyler saying, yeah, he's, he's got emulation mode turned on as well. Okay. Busted through some questions. All right, I'm gonna keep going. All right, so then there's the CDN. Now, a lot of a lot of you are listening are like, yeah, it does CDN, but I've consulted for big clients who don't serve their stuff from CDNs, which uh, is insane to me. So um, I'm gonna talk about that and I'm gonna give some examples of why you need to do this. But these are the pillars. These are the three pillars: caching, pre-rendering, and, and putting everything on the CDN. 
So I'm going to, I'm going to kind of talk about these three things today, and we're going to kind of go into how you do these things in Angular, but let me give you some examples of why these matter. I want you to imagine your website without caching of the API calls and your server's getting about a thousand requests per second. Um, it, the, the app has to go to the server for everything, right? All the calls have to go to the server. If you throw caching of your API into your app, then maybe it goes down to 200 requests per second because the data you cache during the build time, okay? A lot of us have data that isn't unique to users. It's unique to the page they're on and that can be cached during the build. So if your server got 80% less requests in production, that sounds pretty amazing, right? Like To me, that sounds fantastic. The security benefits, um, the cost benefits, the um, yeah, just the API service that you're not having to maintain in production, all that benefit uh, it gets it gets really really big. So um, so yeah, turning caching on is highly highly beneficial to making your app faster. Okay, pre-rendering. Let's talk about this experience, you know, and I've kind of hinted to it, but here's a visual to help understand this. I'm going to imagine a user comes to your website without pre-rendering turned on. This is this is what every Angular app is out of the gate. So like I'm describing your Angular app if you're not already running either Universal or Scully, okay? So, um, and even if you're running Universal, <clears throat> there's some of the benefits here that you're, that you're not fully getting. So anyway, so I want you to imagine the user comes right here. Let me turn on my uh, my select. The user comes to your website and they load your index.html, right? Cool. So they loaded your index.html and for this whole time frame, the, the JavaScript's downloading because that's the very first thing that the index text is going to do. It's going to say, all right, let's get the JavaScript. And the whole time that's downloading, the user doesn't see anything, right? Fantastic user experience. I mean, this is what Angular is. This is what React is. This is what Vue is. This isn't a criticism on Angular. This is what JavaScript apps are, okay? Now that JavaScript's done downloading, great. Now what? Nothing, because it now has to parse what it just downloaded. And sometimes that's big, so you don't see anything for a second. And then finally, it evaluates it, and then eventually it calls the bootstrap call on your Angular app, and boom, your website's visible, all right? So that's... This is what normally your website works like, okay? Now, if you throw a Jamstack in front, you pre-render it. Let me turn this uh, tool off. <clears throat> now, if you pre-render, when the user comes to your website and they load the index.html, as soon as they download it, they immediately see a version of your site. <clears throat> and this site, there's something strange about it. It looks like the real website. And if you're using hrefs for all your click targets, if they click on those buttons and, and clickable things, it actually works like a real website too. Because anything they click makes the view change. All right. It's just happening in a different way than if it was happening. Anyway. So the whole time they're seeing your website, they're scrolling, they're clicking, they can do whatever they want. They don't know that the website has or doesn't have JavaScript. They have no idea what's going on with the framework underneath it. The JavaScript downloads, they're not too interested because they were already interacting with the website. The JavaScript starts to parse. It eventually calls Angular Bootstrap. Users aren't really too concerned because they were already interacting, reading, clicking, and scrolling on your website. And so the experience for the user, dramatically different by using the Jamstack, okay? Hold on, I'm going to clear my throat again. All right, so that's with pre-rendering. Um, let's come over here. So now let's talk about with the CDN, without a CDN. Um, any user, I want you to imagine um, a user, your server's over here, maybe um, on East Coast in, in the United States, and your users are distributed across the world. Anytime they want your index HTML, or any of your assets, or any of your API calls, they've got to travel clear, clear around this blue spaceship that we're all on right they got to go from their computer on one side of the blue spaceship all the way around to wherever your server's at they got to get that and then they got to travel back all the way around the spaceship so it can be slow right and you can pay for lots you can pay for lots of um data uh and transfer fees to, to to support that infrastructure right whereas if you embrace the cdn cdns are like we will give you tons of they don't data is cheap for us because that's our job and you don't have to pay to get it globally distributed so what happens with the cdn your server's here but the cdns distribute your assets all around the world 
And so when the user comes to get some of your API calls and some of your data, they just they 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 just go somewhere really really close to them because the CDN took care of that, and you didn't have to wonder how did the CDN take care of that. <laughs> what if there's outages? That's their business, and they don't charge you a lot. They're really they're insanely cheap because that's their job is to do lots of data globally distributed for really really cheap. So that's one of the other advantages is here. <clears throat> it's not slow. You're not paying for tons of transfer, and your network doesn't get bogged. There's no bottleneck like you have a choke point when you're hosting this stuff on your own server. So yeah, these are, and so those are kind of your three main points, right? Your caching, your pre-rendering and your CDN. So let's talk about this same stuff on top of Angular, right? Let's get a little bit more into it. <clears throat> so with caching, we have a, we have some features called transfer state. They allow you to make calls during your build that get cached for production. I'm going to show you how to do this. All right. For pre-rendering, um, Scully is going to pre-render your website. All right. And sometimes you need to help it. Um, and so there's a nice plugin system that where you help Scully with the pre-rendering. And there's two main pieces of what it's doing. The first part is route discovery, where it's like, hey, what's how many routes are in this friggin' app? I've never seen this app before. And it has to go through and discover the routes in your app. Okay. Once it's done discovering your routes, it's then gonna pre-render all the routes that it found. All right. Now, sometimes you need to help it with the route discovery because um, you might have a query parameter like a user ID, a product ID, a chart ID, or any other sort of unique query parameter or not query parameter, but route parameter in your URL. So sometimes you have to help it discover those parameters. And I'm going to show you how to do that today. And then other times with pre-rendering, maybe you want to add in additional pieces after the fact maybe you want to add metadata i'm going to show you how to do pre-rendering assistance as well with pre-render plug or post-render plugins so um scully is going to help you with caching with printer and then it's also the cdn doesn't really change with scully scully is just like hey you still have to be a responsible web citizen and deploy this to a thing and there's lots of things that make this easy. Like if you deploy to Firebase, it's just it's just hosted. GitHub yeah, Pages for your blog that's just hosted with the CDN in front of it. Um, Netlify, which is you know they're kind of the originators of the Jams. Like they put everything in behind the CDN as well. So um, so yeah. Um, so CDNs are useful. Scott has a question. He said CDNs are useful, but when an API backend service is needed. You need to hit the original server location unless I don't understand the question. Scott, do you want to unmute and ask? So when you have, I hope you can hear me. When you have the CDN, it's basically things like images, video, uh, static stuff. But let's say you have to save, do some CRUD operations, that hit some backend APIs. Um, I believe the CDN won't help you there. You got to go straight to the orig origin of the server service location. True. There, yes, yeah, true. If, anytime you're going to post data up, yeah, your CDN is going to look at that and say, "Yeah, I'm going to just pass this through straight to their servers and let that get posted like normal." But, um, but yeah, you're right. Like CDN doesn't help for CRUD. It can help for the reading part of CRUD, but it doesn't necessarily help for like the the insertion or the deletion or posting stuff. So, so yeah, good good point. All right, <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. So, so yeah, the CDN portion of Jamstack with Angular doesn't really change. So we're going to focus on caching, pre-rendering, and some of the other tooling for contextual data loading that you now need to consider once you get into a, an Angular app. So this is, this, this website is 100 contacts. These are, these are one of the first users of Scully. Um, so on the right, you have their website loading with Scully. On the left, you have their website loading without Scully. Okay. In a second here, it's going to flash where both, both sides are white. That's when it starts over. Okay. So watch for that graphic to start back over where they both flash back to Google. All right. So here they go. They start loading the right. That's how fast Scully loads. The left is without Scully. So it's still loading, right? So there's about eight seconds different there. Their website is huge. Their assets are not optimized. They've optimized as well as they can, but they're in a hybrid, you know, Angular Jess, Angular scenario. So they're doing as best they can. Their team is really actually like insanely brilliant. I I really enjoy working with them. But it is, um, you know, they they they've got a bit of handcuffs around their technology, and they're trying to move to Angular, and, and their site will get a bit 
smaller and, and be a bit more efficient when they get there. But for now, they were able to get the speed on the right without finishing their upgrade to Angular. Think about that. That's kind of crazy. If they wanted to get some speed through Angular Universal, Universal was not going to help them, right? Like Universal sees Angular JS and goes, I'm dead. See you guys later. I'm out. Nice knowing you though. You know, and so um, so yeah, it's really, really powerful what Scully allows you to do with a, a, a high volume, high traffic, highly profitable website like 100 Contacts is able to do. So this is like an example of what I'm going to show you how to do today. You're going to be able to take your website, whether this is your work website, your blog, your personal business or whatever, and you're going to be able to do this type of optimization on it. All right. Here's some of the concepts we'll cover. All right. I promise we're going to walk you through all these concepts and more. All right. So we're going to clone the projects, which most of you hopefully already did. And um, the, the, one of the projects you're cloning is called the Donut Store. Okay, this is, I scraped Krispy Kreme's data and made it into a small website just so that we have like a homepage and like a details page for each one of the donuts. And like, there's not a lot happening on this website, okay? And that's on purpose. Um, I want it to be simple to where everyone didn't feel intimidated or like, wait, what's, what's going on with this website? It's not like my website. This should be like everyone's website, okay? This, this is, is, is simple on purpose. And you should be able to add the optimizations we're going to add to this website to any website. <clears throat> Sometimes you have to tilt your head and maybe squint and think about it for a second. But all these, the, all these things will fit into your website as well, I promise. All right, I'm going to show you how to do route plugins. This is the part where you assist Scully. Hey, Scully, this is how you get all the right query parameters or right uh, route parameters for all my routes. So I'm going to show you how to do that because that can be intimidating. Then you do it and you're like, oh. That was stupid easy because it is. Um, I'm going to show you to do render plugins and you're like, I don't even know what that is or why I want it. Well, I'll show you a couple examples of why you want it. Okay. I'm going to show you to transfer state. It's a crazy simple angular service to cache your calls. You use it. And during the Scully build, it will make the API call and it will cache it. And then in production, it won't make the API call. It will just use it out of the cache. It's insane. Like we abstracted the, that difficulty into a function call for you. And I'm going to show you how to do that. We're going to do markdown support. So you can be like, oh, this is how I add a blog. If I wanted to do blogs and I wanted to make my own blog website with markdown files and like, and, and do my own thing, this is how I do that with Scully. Um, and then I'm going to do some additional learning. I'm going to explain to you kind of some additional pieces of Scully, some tools to detect if you're running in Scully, if you're running in production, or if you're running on your local host, some extra config options, and then we'll do a lot of Q and A, and and you're gonna be able to practice all these things. I'm gonna show you. Okay, now part of what's about to happen is I'm gonna show something. I'm gonna write the code, <clears throat> and I'm gonna pause and say, "All right, you do it now." And I'm just gonna sit here and talk. I'm gonna take questions. I'm gonna let people, you know, make starky remarks. Um, find out who's smarter between my Twitter. I like, I'm going to let you, you know, I'm just going to talk and fill the airspace, right? Jorge is going to be here in case anyone gets really stuck. Jorge's going to be able to bust out into a, a breakout room. I think that's what they're called here in Slack. And Jorge is going to help you resolve any features, any errors that you might have. So Jorge and I are going to tag team some of the technical difficulties that we face today. Okay. So that's what you can expect for the next few hours. Um, all right. So to get started, I need everyone to clone these. Um, I need everyone to clone these. So, I'm going to give everyone two minutes to, to I'm going to give everyone three or four minutes. I'm going to give everyone five minutes. Okay. If you already got it cloned, this is the time where you go grab a drink. This is the time where you go, um, you know, let the, the dog out or whatever. All right, we're back. Okay. Uh, all right. So um let's keep going all right two questions bryce why'd you name it scully good question here's why when you're gonna write a static site generator that makes static files and you own a company called hero devs you got to name it after a hero a protagonist of sorts right and we love x files and static files and x files just kind of went together well right so at that point you got to pick between two main characters you got for any X-Files fans, you got Dana Scully or Fox Mulder, right? Uh, Dana and I, there's a couple there's a couple reasons why we chose Dana Scully. 
both got she's she's ginger i'm ginger right so we both got the red hair but also um artists get to paint the world according with their own paintbrush uh we didn't want we want the world to be more diverse we don't want to just like we wanted to have a strong strong female protagonist dana scully might be one of the strongest ever so we picked scully because she's a hero she's uh the strong strong protagonist and you gotta love x files so that's where scully came from all right bjorn what about authentication if the pre-rendered page shows a logged in user and then falls back to the login page once user kicks out it will be quite confusing all right so bjorn i want you to imagine scully is on your server okay and it's pre-rendering the website all right if you have an authentication in front and Scully, let's like say, let's say Scully goes to the web, to the page, uh, you know, myapp.com slash uh, people, okay? And if you have to be logged in to see the people page, what's your app gonna do? It's gonna show the login screen on the people page, right? Or it's gonna redirect to the login page, right? So your Skype for that on the server, it's not going to have like a, a user session. It's not going to know who the users. So it's just going to do a redirect. It's going to render the login page and all your pages are just going to render the login page. So if your app is, um, doesn't, if you don't do any customization for the Jamstack out of the gate, all your pages that require authentication are just going to render, you know, your login screen, but you can do some things different and you can change how your login interacts with this, with the page so that you can render a lot of the website. And just leave the login the, maybe the, the the login modal can be just on top and they'll just see so they can still see a lot of the website behind it they'll see the login screen on top of it but they'll see it immediately so they won't have, they won't have to wait eight or nine or ten seconds to see the login screen they'll just see it immediately right and then when the angular app turns on it can take the 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 text out of the input and and log them in so yeah anyway it it, it that's a bit more advanced question. Let me get to that. Let, let, let me get to some of the more basics first. That's a good question though, Bjorn. All right. Okay. So everyone hopefully has got these, um, these, these, uh, can I vote on this? Ah, oh, dude, let me do the poll. Nice. All right. So I'm going to head over to my code. Can everyone still see my code? You guys can see my ID now. Yeah. Good. Perfect. All right. So, um, I'm going to serve this, this, this donut store app. Okay. So let's do ng serve. And I'm also going to go to the API, the donuts API, and I'm going to say npm run serve. All right. So those are the two commands you're going to need. For the for the donut store, you do ng serve. Right? Just like that. And then for the API, npm run serve. You're going to need to run both of those commands in a terminal, okay? You do that, and we're cooking with gas. The app is going to run. So let me go ahead and show you this this app if i go over here if i go to my local host 4200 this is where you're going to start to get hungry and i i do apologize nah i don't shameless yeah i got cheetos yeah i'm trying to i want the cheetos okay all right so this is this is this is what your website looks like it is so simple okay it's got a list of donuts you click on one and you're on the details page okay you can click on this link to go get nutritional facts. Um, it's got a link out to our GitHub. If you want to go, if you guys want to go star Scully just to get our stars up, that'd be great. It's got us over on Twitter. If you want to go follow us on Twitter, just so you get some of the latest updates, go follow us on Twitter. But anyway, the app, I think everyone can agree. This app is crazy simple. If I come up to the top, it takes me back to the homepage, click on a donut, right? There's not a lot going on here. Okay, simple, simple app. I am going to show a couple things real quick though. If I come over to my dev tools, let me make this a little bit bigger. Sorry. If I there's if I open up the command pal on a Mac, that's Command Shift P. If I say disable JavaScript, does anyone have a guess what will happen if I refresh the page with JavaScript disabled? Any guesses? All right, I'm going to do some refresh. It's what you thought. Nothing happens. If I, if I block JavaScript on a JavaScript app, right? Like then, then that's, that's not good. 
I, I just killed it. So I just wanted to prove this app doesn't actually run without JavaScript, okay? Because in a second, it is going to run without JavaScript. And minds will be blown. Okay, let's enable JavaScript. Okay, so now JavaScript is back on. Refresh, got the website, okay? All right. So this is our website. Let me let me walk you through some code. It is very, very simple. There's not a lot going on here. Um, I'm actually going to delete our build from my... I was doing some warm up here. I'm gonna delete that build as well. All right. So it's got like it's got a it's got an app component. It has a donuts component, which is the, that's the component that shows all the donuts, and then it has a donut component, and that's just the one that shows the one component. So there's there's really only three components here. Like I'm not trying to blow anyone's mind. I tried to make something simple that we could all wrap our head around in just a few minutes. All right. So uh, the routes are simple. It has the home route. It just goes, it loads the donut module and that just bootstraps the, all the donuts. It has donut slash donut ID and that will reload the single donut module where it just shows one donut. And then it also has an about route, okay? So if we come back over to our app, we can also go to about, all right? And I'm gonna zoom in here. This is why I did this app. It's Angular, which we needed. It needs route parameters. So I'm gonna be able to show you how to do route parameters. It does make an API call. So I'm gonna be able to show you how to cache that. We'll be able to add some blog support. Okay, so there's actually a lot going on for us here, like in this very simple Angular app. This is why we picked this, okay? All right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to install Scully, all right? Is anyone ready for this install? It's like, we've tried to make it as easy as possible. There's actually like 10 steps to get it installed, but we made a schematic. So you only have to know one, right? Everyone do a virtual high five to Jorjito over there. Cause Jorjito, he made our schematic. Thank you, Jorge, you're the man. Okay, so let me, let me walk you through, um, let me walk you through getting Scully installed, okay? So here's my terminal. Can everyone see my terminal? Is that good enough? All right, so let's clear this out. All right, so we're gonna use the schematic. So you just say ng add, and we're gonna say at scoli.io slash init, okay? Init. So all you have to type. It's gonna go through and do a bunch of stuff. I got an error last night when I tried this, but it still worked. Jorge, get ready. Get ready. I love when Jorge sees the errors when I'm presenting because he's convinced that, it, that all this works flawlessly. And I'm like, no, nah, dude, full of it. It works in my computer. It works on it works on his computer. So yeah. Just tell your boss it works on Jorge's computer. It should be Yeah, all right. just send me the code and I will yeah. uh, scold it. Yep. Okay. All right. So this is going to go through and it's going to add some stuff. It's going to modify your app module. It's going to add one more polyfill. It's going to add some scripts to your package JSON. It's installing some npm stuff all right it's taking a second it has to download puppeteer that's one of the things that's getting downloaded which is the bulk of what's happening right now is the download of puppeteer i feel like i should play this song oh we're good all right we're done all right jorge you see my error bro you see my error bro uh you're in angular 11 of course uh yes i know is it is it angular 11 is that the problem uh yes for the type uh, the scully typescript uh right. plugins all right it's only for that Dude, and for that work ticket. because it's the last step all right we gotta add ticket for that yes I will um, now. okay anyway so we're on angular 11 by the way so if you haven't used angular 11 yet it came out last week angular 11 on november 11th 11 11 11 was what happened last week so um, this project I upgraded to Angular 11, so there's nothing fantastically new here, but just know you're on Angular 11. All right. So now that we've now that we've got it installed, like I, I'm gonna, I'm truly we're truly trying to make this easy. You can already pre-render your website. That's it. That's it. That's all you had to do. So watch this. I'm gonna say npx Scully. That's all I'm gonna do. All right. Come on. Oh yeah. So my bad. 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 I have to do a build first. My bad. My bad. 
So let's do NG build. And then we'll do NPX Scully. Sorry. But I didn't actually have to, I'm not going to configure anything. I'm just going to do a build and then I'm going to do Scully. Let's do that real quick. Here comes our build. Got some nice ambiance. X Files music going on. The truth is out there. You just have to run a build first. Right, Jorge? The truth, it, it is there. Just don't forget yeah. to do your build first. All right, so there's the build. Now we're going to do this. Now we're going to do Scully. So the first time you run Scully, it's going to say, I do we would like to make things better. Are you cool if we log some things? I'm going to say yes. All right. That only happens the first time. And you can actually, there's a command line flag to get past that. All right. So it ran and it's done. So this is pretty cool. Um, let me kind of walk you through what it did. It said, hey, let me find all your routes. Remember I said that was the first thing I had to do was find all your routes. So that this this is it saying, hello, I'm doing all your routes here. Let me traverse your app for the routes. And it's pulling in, it's pulling in data to create additional routes. And it kind of gives us this air. Hey, I don't know how to do this route, so I'm going to skip it. So it gave us like an air. I'll, we'll come back to that in a minute. And then it says, I rendered the about page and I rendered the home page. So it was able to render three, two of our three distinct routes, right? If you remember our three routes up here, the home route, the donut route, and then the about route, it got the about and it got the home. It couldn't do this second one. All right. That's what it's trying to tell us. All right, though. But it's cool. It did it. It did it. Let's go and look at the files. Actually, I'm actually, I'm not going to look at the files yet. I just want to show you how cool this is. So um, I don't know why it's, it's not ending there, Hori. You see that? It didn't exit the process. I it might be Angular 11. Anyway. So I mean, I just killed it at the end. Once it got to the end, I'm going to, I'm going to say MPX goalie serve. Okay. Is it NPM? Oh yeah. It's NPM run scully. Sorry. NPM run scully serve. Sorry. You have to spell scully right. When you spell it right, it works. That's why I found. Oh, why? Am I already running? Okay. If anyone gets this error address already in use, I'm going to show you how to fix that. If anyone else got this, you're not alone. Okay. You're going to say npm run scully and you do dash dash or is it just kill server? No, it's just kill server. Kill server like this. So if it says that the address is already in use, just kill the server. Bro, Jorge, I think the Angular 11s, it doesn't like Angular 11. Uh, I think the same. <laughs> I think it's Angular 11. All right. So run kill server, and then when it doesn't end, command C, and then do your Scully serve. Oh, my God. Use, use MPX. MPX is Scully kill server. MPX Scully kill server kill server dead bro yeah did you did you pull down this project Jorge uh, I'm on that yeah I have the project okay. but with all the all codes the so, yeah yeah Is anyone else seeing the same thing I'm seeing raise your hand if you've seen it. Oh, yeah, I think it's your computer. Uh, can you close? <laughs> hey, okay. In the price, computer work in the Tyler 2. So. Works on my machine. Works on my yeah. so I, I hate my life. <laughs> All right. Okay. This is fantastic. Um, AX pipe crap node. Where's my node processes here? It's 11 o'clock. Oh, it's 11 o'clock. 
Did you hear that? Sorry, my computer talks to me every hour on the hour. Apparently, I got a lot of node processes going on. Hold on, let me open up my. I don't remember how to get what's running on what port. Oh my gosh. This makes me so angry. Find what is... Oh, I just gotta Google this real quick. I always forget how to do this. Oh, and it's that. Which one is the process ID? Yeah, but this is the 3,000. Oh, I don't want 3,000 now. I want, I want 1864, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Kill that one. Kill 56254. Okay. All right, no one's running. All right, now let's try it. NPM run, Scully, serve. Oh my gosh, sorry everyone. All right, all right, all right, all right. We're back, we're back. So let me, now let me show you, here's our app. I'm actually gonna throw this over on my other desktop here, sorry. Here's our app running inside of Scully, okay? So, <clears throat> I'm gonna actually just kind of take you straight to the fact that this isn't scrolling. I'm just gonna disable JavaScript and do a refresh. Really? Am I looking at the wrong port? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1668, there you go. There you go, there's our server, all right. <clears throat> the JavaScript's enabled. So if I do a refresh, it, ro it loads. If I do disable JavaScript, it still loads. Okay, so my website running in Scully is the same exact website. I've turned off JavaScript. It's still loaded, right? If I look at my network and I look at just like JavaScript and do a refresh, like it didn't even download the JavaScript. Like it just skipped it all, right? If I do a full refresh, the only thing getting downloaded right now is images and some of my styles, right? So that's the only thing that's pulling down. No JavaScript are downloaded. If I look at just the request to the to the index, <clears throat> you'd actually see normally. Oh yeah, um, I forgot. I'm going to restart my ng serve. So if we go to our ng serve, sorry, I just killed it. Start up again, bro. You can do it. So I come to my ng serve. Um, I can't remember what I was going to show you. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, sorry. If I come to the ng-serve, if you look at the network tab for the requested localhost, the localhost, it will be an empty page, right? So, this is what a normal Angular app looks like. Our Scully rendered Angular app, it actually has got all the stuff on it, okay? So, it's fully rendered that HTML page. And then once you add the CSS on top, this is what it looks like. So there's no JavaScript here. I can actually click on these and they die because I didn't pre-render. I didn't pre-render those donut ID pages. Remember, we got the error during the build. It was like, hey, I'm not going to do those pages, but um, it will load my about page and it will load my home page. Those will both work without JavaScript at this point. OK, anyway, let's go ahead and look at what happened as a result of our builds. All right. Does anyone have any issues? 
Someone says, I'm not seeing the donuts menu. Hanyu, so are you just seeing like, are you just seeing like, we hope you enjoy our donuts and then this part's blank? Is that what you're seeing, Hanyu? Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, they need to I, open the server, the API server. Yeah, I think you didn't, I don't think you ran the server. So in a different terminal, you have to run the, the, the API server. Otherwise, there's no, it can't get any donuts. Okay, so make sure that you're doing ng server in one spot and you've done the API server in a different spot and then it will just work. Tobias said one thing. Okay, they run both equally fast somehow. All right, so Tobias, Ruben's saying they're both equally fast. Yeah, in this scenario, they're both equally fast. Let me show you real quick. Um, Tobias, if I come in, 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 if I change this to slow 3G and then I refresh the JavaScript version of the website, watch it flash away and then watch it flash back in. <clears throat> so this is, a, this is a slow 3G connection right here. Well, it's downloading all of my JavaScript. I'm actually going to, here, let's change it to fast 3G because that sucks. All right, refresh. Give us a second. That vendor is pretty big because it's not prod mode. Anyway, come on. Come on. Finish already. All right. So that's not crazy fast, right? The image is all loading slow. Let me do the exact same thing on our on our pre-render side if i do a, if i do a full rebuild so that was like insanely fast right that was like ridiculously that was completely disparate on the speed there right the images are still all slow over here on the pre-render side but as far as the website running fast yeah the website you, it's it's hard to compare when you're running local host on a fast network but when you when you're running um, with, on a fast 3G or slow 3G, it's very, very obvious what's going on. All right, so Celia's fixed. Han Yu, are you fixed? I'm wondering. Hi, you good? I'm good. Okay, good. All right, we're good to go. Okay, cool. So we just needed, it looks like maybe a couple of people just needed to turn the server on. Is that what it was? I think so. All right, okay. I'm going to turn this back on to normal because I don't really want to be running throttled all day today. All right. All right. So um, let's let's um, let's get in and look at the files that were generated as part of it. Because I want you to remember, all we did was install Scully and then run it. Like we, we didn't even do anything like we pre-rendered our site, but like you haven't actually made any changes, right? Like no one here has really modified their code. So let me kind of walk you through what happened. Um, you made an ng build. You used the CLI to make it to do an ng build. And then Scully looked at the results of that build in the disk a donut store and it served it. And then it pre-rendered into the static directory, your website. All right. So if you go into static slash about and you look at the about index HTML, get rid of this. This is your about page, okay? And I'm going to format it real quick so you can kind of see, yeah, this is the about page, right? Remember all those links that are on the about page, that one order list? This is that pre-rendered version of the about page, right? And just to kind of drive it home a little bit further, anyone who's an Angular developer knows your body is empty and you just have app root with nothing inside of it. But look at our app root. This app root's chock full of content, right? It's, it's chock full of pre-rendered stuff. We've got our header in here. We've got our router outlet with our about component in there. We've got our footer component at the bottom, right? Like we've got a, we've got not an insignificant amount of things going on here, right? There's there's a bit of stuff happening here. So this is our pre-rendered about page, and all you did was install Scully and run it. You didn't do much more. Now let's go to our home page, which is just going to be the index that's at the root. I'm going to format this one, All right? So 
sorry. I'm actually going to close this because I don't want this here. All right. Okay. So here's our homepage. Now, again, our app route, which is normally empty, but in our pre render version, it's full of stuff, right? So we've got our header over here. You know, we've got the enjoy the seasonal variety. And then we've got all of our different donuts right here, right? Everyone who, who's an Angular developer knows this stuff does not happen. You, this is clearly a pre rendered Angular page at this point, right? All right. Ruben's got a question. How about applications with multiple language support? We support four languages. So for you, Ruben, I'm going to take you to Scully.io. Okay. And Scully.io, if you go to the docs, this website is rendered with Scully. It is an Angular app, and we have support for English and Spanish. Okay. So there's two languages here. So if you want to see, hey, how to do language support, I'm actually not going to cover it in today's tutorial, today's workshop. But it is a thing that you can go look at our code on our website. Okay, so if you just go to Scully.io and you look at our at our docs, you'll be able to see it. Jorge's put a link to it over in the um, over in the chat. So that is a good question. But this site supports multiple languages. It does it through Scully, which is which is a really really powerful thing. And that was out to be to do hand credit out. That was almost all driven by the community. All we did was add the ability to support multiple languages, and then a bunch of our Spanish-speaking community members showed up and translated all of our stuff. So really, really cool. All right. Um, good questions. All right. So uh, coming back to our code. So here's our index.html. So this is this is our pre-rendered in index.html. All right. I want to walk you through some of the files that got added when we did our install. Okay. So here's the files. It modified my app module. And all it did for that was inside this imports for the app module, it brought in the Scully lib module. So that's one of the things it did. All right, cool. It added a couple scripts to my package JSON, the Scully serve, the Scully and the Scully serve command, right? As well as adding the three Scully libs that need to be installed. All right, it did that as well. That was the other thing that installing Scully did. Uh, I'm not gonna go through package lock because that's a friggin' nightmare. Right. And then let's go to polyfills. It did add one more piece to the angular zone. It added this task tracking. And this is this is so that Scully can know I'm actually done rendering the page. Feel free to save out the pre-render at this point. Because it's very difficult to do that. Like it's it's a much harder problem than you might think. Like, how does Angular or React or View know you're done rendering? The views rendered and all HTTP calls have resolved. How do you know that? It's, it's it's more than academic to figure out how to solve that. Like it's 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 a serious question. And so when you bring this in, it gets a, it gets quite a bit easier. So this is how Scully knows using this this additional add-on. The page is done rendering. I can successfully save this out to file now. It's technically pre-rendered this point. So that's what it did. And then it added a couple of Scully files. The most important one that we care about is the Scully config. Okay. I'm gonna open up the Scully config file. All right. So this is our Scully config file. There's not a lot going on here, all right? It wants to know where the project root is. It wants to know the name of the project. And it says, hey, where do you want me to build this to? Okay, so we can change the name of our output to whatever we want to change it to. All right, so there's really not, a, there's not a lot in here. Like it's very, very simple, but this is the heart of our Scully build is this file, this Scully config, okay? So make no equivocations. This is where we're gonna spend most of our time today is like modifying our Scully build file, all right? And I kind of want to jump in to the very first thing that we need to um, we need to look at. Now, when we do our build, where is our build at? Sorry, I'm going to scroll up until I can find it. Come on. All right, I'm just going to do it one more time. npm npx Scully. It's going to give us this error. It's going to say, "Hey, I can't find this one route route param." All right. So here, let me show it to you. Uh, it says, hey, I skipped this route because you didn't teach me how to do this. I'm not rendering any of the donut files because you didn't teach me how to do this. In fact, if I if I open up my file explorer and I go to the dist and I look in static, there's no donuts folder with like index files for all my donut pages, right? And if I come to my website, the one that has JavaScript turned off and I click on one of these, it doesn't load because it didn't actually pre-render that page. So I actually have to go through and I have to teach Scully, hey, let me teach you how to get a list 
of all of my stuff, of all of my donut IDs, so you can go ahead and pre-render those. All right. So that, that's our very first, that's our very next step is we're going to teach Scully how to find all of our distinct donut IDs. Before I proceed, I want to make sure that we're not leaving anyone behind. Is everyone with us to this point? You've got the app running in Angular, um, and you've got you've run your first Scully build. Kendra, you said no. Are you not you not with us? Ruben says he's running. I have to install nothing. Oh, dude, I'm sorry. That sucks. Um. Bryce says 1668 doesn't show the details page. Bryce, are you running the API server? Like, did you run? Um, did you open? Did, did you clone the donut API project? Another donut store project. Okay, so Bryce, I think that you're good. Is what you're saying? Bryce is good. Okay, cool. All right, okay, we're good. Tobias said, can't that not reduce to just the route info because project root, project name and output dir? Um, Bryce, are you saying, couldn't I get rid of some of these files? I think that's what you're saying. You probably could. Um, if you were in an NX workspace though, then I kind of need to bring these back again, right? So it. it it's good to have these here for consistency's sake. So, so yeah, like that's why they're here. But yeah, I mean, some of these could be derived from the Angular JSON file. But if you're working in NX, you don't necessarily have an Angular JSON file. So yeah. Anyway, okay. Does anyone else want me to wait? Condra's installing Node again, and I'm sorry for that. You're gonna catch up in a second, and maybe I'll just push my code, and you can pull that branch, and you'll just catch back up with us. Deal. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show everyone when we did this build and it said, Hey, I can't find these donuts. We're going to go ahead and configure our thing. How to get these donuts? So the first thing I need to be able to do is, um, I'm going to go into my routes and this is where we configure some of our routes. Okay. Where we, where we configure the routes that need these parameters. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, Hey, and I'm going to paste that route that it said it had a problem with. Okay, so I just pasted this straight in there. We're going to add some config for this. Now, we have to define which plugin we're going to use. And I'm going to use a plugin called JSON plugin. Because we're just going to fetch some JSON from the server. So we made this really simple for everybody. All right. Now, with the JSON plugin, I got to teach it how to get these specifically, the donut IDs. So I'm going to say, hey, for that donut ID, the JSON wants me to specify a URL. So I'm going to say URL. And everyone, we're, if you remember, we're running our, our API on localhost 3000. Localhost 3000. And the donuts are in the donuts call. Okay, so if I come over to my browser and I do localhost 3000 slash donuts, it gets me an array of all these donuts, right? So localhost 3000 slash donuts, that's my, that's my API server just giving me all the donuts. And if you look at these donuts, one of these fields is the ID property, right? And it's this, it's this one, it's ID. So I need to go ahead and tell the, the plugin use this field to map to the donut id all right so for the donut id go get the donuts here and use the property id all right so this is how you configure your scully build to get donut ids you say hey use the json plugin and for the donut ids i just copied this and put that here go to this url and pluck the IDs off of each of those objects and then merge all those distinct IDs into this URL, like merge them in one by one and you come out with our distinct URLs, which is exactly what we wanted, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, now that I configured that, 
I'm going to leave it up here because I know some of you are typing as we go, even though I'm going to give you some time to come back and do this in a second. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it up and I'm going to keep going. So over here, um, I'm going to say MPX Scully again because I wanted to do a Scully build. And I want you to notice this time it's going to do a lot more routes, right? Like there's a lot more things getting rendered this time. Okay. And so I'm going to kind of come in here and it notice it didn't give us that skipping error last time, like right, or, right around here, we had that skipping error, but this time it's like, no, dude, Hey, I'm just going to render out all your files. You know, like you're good to go. So now if we go to our static directory, uh, it's telling us last time it said it only rendered three pages. Now it's telling us it rendered or two pages. Now it's telling us it rendered 49 pages. So if we come up to our static files, we look in here, we actually have this donuts folder with all the different donut IDs in there. And if we expand that, I'm gonna hide the terminal. If I format this, you can actually see um, the donut information for the cinnamon twist donut, right? Because we're in the cinnamon twist folder. This is the pre-rendered heavenly twist to an old favorite, right? Anyway. So this is um, this is our pre rendered So now it's pre-rendered every page on our entire website. So all we had to do to get that was put this config in there, right? For this route, use the JSON plugin and use these this config for that route. Super simple, right? Um, all right, I want everyone to be able to configure their project to run with that. So I'm gonna pause here with this up, answer questions, tap dance, whatever. I might play a song on my harmonica. Uh, I can only play one, so I do not take requests. Um, all right, so Alex Ali says, can the URL property have a dynamic URL in the sense that we have different multiple production URLs? How do you work around that? I don't think I understand that question. I don't understand your question. Alex. Um, yeah, some of the donuts that have uh, trademarks in there, just so you know, if, you, if it has a trademark in the name, it doesn't, that, that URL is broken and I'm not a good enough workshop instructor to have fixed that yet. So some of those URLs are going to, if they have a trademark in the name, they don't work, but yeah. Um, I mean, since we're choosing locals through that. Oh, um, okay. So what you're saying, Alex, is what if I was building for QA versus dev, right? Is that, I think that's what you're saying. Um, so let me kind of show you, I want to, I want to kind of say, let me show this. So imagine I did this MPX Scully. Um, dash dash m equals prod or whatever okay i want you to imagine i did this okay um i could then come in here because this this my, my scully config is just a typescript file true like it's just typescript so i could i could npm install the yargs npm pa node package and if i if i install the yargs then it will allow me to pull out of the the, the environment it will let me say hey if I'm building for prod, you know, use, so imagine I, I I'm not gonna do that live, but imagine I said, you know, um, I imported that and I say, uh, const donuts URL is equal to process.m is equal to prod, right? And if it's prod, then use HTTPS, mydomain.com slash donuts otherwise if it's not prod use http localhost 3000 donuts right so i take that and i i replace this with donuts url okay so i'm just going to do this and i'm actually going to run it again okay So it's going to run and when it executes this code it's going to it's going to find this and it's going to say 
the prod the environment was not prod so i'm gonna use local host but if you if you set your your local host environment to prod it would then use whatever url you wanted to or you could do qa or you could do you know you could do whatever you want to get some of those environment switching you're in your scully build so yeah definitely i hope that makes sense okay alex i think i answered that question let's go to the next question pavel what about when you have really large amount of data so you need to paginate the results all right so pagination um pavel we're friends um i'm going to show you some contextual loading techniques in a little bit but i need you to be patient with me um i want you to imagine that for the pre-render i want you to imagine i could say if i'm pre-rendering only get page only get some results so that i don't render ten thousand things in my printer that would suck right i want you to imagine you're like hey just just pre-render page one or whatever but pavel to your question if you put the page in the url if your page is going up in the url then you could pre-render all your pages too you just have to build a plugin over here that helps you resolve all the all the different pages so yeah you can totally handle that pavel um i'm not going to cover that in this workshop today but if you come to our office hours i will show you how to do that live like i will live code that with you in your project or i'll make it up on my own project good question all right yang says let's say new donut ids are added to the database afterwards do you have to rerun scully again yes that is one of the things of jamstack all right i'm glad you asked that question young um i want you to before today before today everyone in this workshop who's never most 97 percent of people said i have never done jamstack before everyone in this workshop you only did a build if one of us on the team changed code all right so i wouldn't like gratuitously run builds if someone wasn't modifying the code because the code got the data at runtime the code didn't get the data at build time like i didn't get the donuts at build time i got the donuts at runtime but we're now changing and we're doing a build that will get the donuts at build time right and it'll get the donut ids so if any of the data that my my app depends on changes i now need to do an, a build again so before we only built when data changed not no sorry we only built when code changed but we didn't build when data changed now with Scully or with Jamstack, not necessarily Scully, but just Jamstack, and this is true for React, Vue, and Angular for everyone, you build when code changes and you also build when data changes, right? So you're doing a lot more builds. It's a way better user experience for the user, but you are doing a lot more builds on your end. So this, this is a great question, Young. I'm glad you asked that. That is one of the big mindsets you have to get in when you're switching from traditional Angular to like a Jamstack type environment. So really good question. Susan, we are restricted on levels of Angular we can use and are not close to Angular 11. What versions of NPM and Angular is Scully supported on? Great question. And Jorge, you're going to have to remind me. I think we have a version somewhere pinned in the past that ran on 8, right? 8, yeah. When you installed Scully with the NCAT Scully IO slash init, uh, we check your version. And if okay. 8, or latest, we install the version you need. Okay. If it's less than eight, we say, hey, you we can say we don't work. So yeah. I think it might work on Angular 7. I'm not sure. We've never tried it and we don't support it. So Angular 8, Susan, is the latest we've got, or so it's the oldest that we support. So I hope that's okay. But I mean, we, that's us stretching to try and get some legacy support back. So that's 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 the answer there. All right, Young and Scully can be automated to run daily. Yeah, I mean if you use Jenkins or uh, GitHub Actions or Netlify or whatever your CI/CD tool is, you can you can webhook into it and say, hey, ev almost any uh, CMS where you have content, so donuts or where you store blogs or where you anything, almost any CMS is going to have a webhook ability to save out anytime the data changes all right so you can integrate with your cms and say hey data changed rerun a scully build right and you can actually i'm going to show you some tools to where you can say hey scully data changed just re-render certain pages because you don't maybe you maybe don't want to re-render everything so let me let, let's actually let me show you that real quick young because that's a really good question 
I want everyone to imagine my data changed and I want to re-render one of my pages, okay? Let's say I want to re-render anything with the word strawberry in it, all right? I'm going to show you how to do that with Scully, all right? So we're going to say MPX Scully. And we're gonna, we have these command line switches. We, there's a lot of them and I'll show them to you in a second, but I kind of want you to see this. I'm going to say route filter is equal to star strawberry star, All right? This is gonna pre-render only the things that start, the only the things that have a strawberry in them. Start it up. So it only had one or four, Never mind. I found four with strawberry in it, all right? If we change that to, if we remove straw and we just do berry, I think we should get a few more. All right. So we got nine now, yeah, because we got blueberry and uh, raspberry. All right, so, okay. So my point here is, like, imagine you had a CMS and you knew which ID had just changed and you only wanted to pre-render that ID. You can build some system to say, hey, re-render the route that has just this ID in it and it will re-render all of those, okay? Now, Young, to answer your question, you, maybe you're like, man, I have to set that up manually. Yeah, you do today. But one of the features I talked about when we started was regenerative rebuilding. And we want to help you. We want to give you a tool so that when you rebuild based on data changes, not on code changes, when the code changes, you're, you're, you're up the creek. You have to rebuild everything because that might change how the whole entire website looks. So you, you're the code changes full rebuild. But if just content changes, I can rebuild just the pages affected by that. And we're going to give you some tools to make regenerative rebuilding much, much easier and much, much quicker. All right. And that way you can have like a real time, fully responsive, pre-rendered, but also updated in real time, pre-rendered website. So we're going to give you those tools in the near future. All right. Rami says, for the case of route donut slash donut ID, can we just render the container page so the data still needs to be rendered manually via HTTP. Yes. Um, Rami, do you care if I answer your question later? Because that's part of the presentation is I'm going to give you some tools to dynamically show or hide content during the pre-rendered or runtime phases. So Rami, I can't see your thumbs up, but I know your thumbs up. I mean, I can, I can tell you that later. All right. By the way, does anyone remember that movie, Rami and Michelle? High School Reunion. That was like one of the best movies maybe ever. I just remember watching that and laughing nonstop the whole time. Anyway, all right. Sorry. Okay. Um, I mean, you probably hate that comment. I, I hate twin questions because I'm a twin. Anytime someone finds out, I get dumb twin questions. Like, who wants to hear dumb twin? Any question you can think of off the top of your head for a twin, I've heard it 500,000 times. Think of one. Can't conjure it. Say one. Can you really feel when he gets hurt? Bam, bam. If I pinch you, does he feel it? If he's yeah. sad, are you sad? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of them. I know all of them. Rami's probably feels the same thing about high school reunion. So sorry. Sorry, Rami. I just did something to you that I hate when people do to me. So I apologize. All right. Okay. Um, all right. So let me show you some of the other command line switches that you can, that you can run Scully with. I showed you the route filter, right? I'm going to show you a different one. So let's do um, show browser. All right, this this helps if you're debugging something. Like you're like, hey, why, why, why does something happen in a weird way? And you, and you actually want to see it pre-render. So let's do npx scully show browser, and it's gonna pop up a browser. Do it, and we're gonna see a bunch of stuff render. So yeah, it's done. It just rendered 49 tabs in Chrome and close them all out and you can add some timeouts like maybe you don't want it to render so quickly like you want it to slow down because that was pretty quick right that like if you were trying to debug something that wasn't really going to help you so i want you to imagine i wanted to slow down something like in my donuts in my donuts component the whole list of donuts if you want to slow down scully scully can't actually finish if you have like a set timeout. So if you want to say set timeout 
and you want to just do an anonymous function there if you tell it to wait 20 seconds on that one route if i run this again any sort of set timeout scully's waiting remember i told you scully's trying to smartly say hey are you done rendering yo are you done rendering it's waiting and it's gonna wait for your set timeouts to finish too so if i want to do this again with the show browser one of the pages is going to get left open at the end for 20 seconds and it's that home page okay all the rest of them are going to close and then we're just going to be left with just the home page or oh yeah, yeah, yeah my bad my bad my bad okay i forgot we're finally we're finally to a new a new a new lesson that i gotta show everyone this is a, this is a teaching moment though see this set timeout i just added this is the first time I changed Angular code since we started the presentation. I haven't changed Angular code yet, right? So we've done all this without modifying Angular code. I actually have to do another build in order for this to take effect. So let me show you how I develop with Scully when I'm developing locally. Let me show you this. So in one terminal, I say ng build watch. That's going to do a build anytime I change code, right? And it's actually pretty efficient. So let's get it going. Come on, buddy. All right. So if I change this to an extra millisecond, hit save really fast, right? Like it, it took almost no time at all, right? So this is this. And now I'm going to, now I'm actually going to tell Scully to do the exact same thing. I want Scully to, to build on a watch as well. So let's do this. So if we say um, MPX Scully watch. Can I do show browser on that watch? I've never tried this. Jorgito, does it work? Jorge's, Jorge's, he's never test, but this will open and close tabs every now and then. Yeah. yeah. So one of the tabs is this home page, and this is the one that's waiting. This is the one it's waiting on. Okay. This is the one that it's it's not finishing for us because this is the home page. This is the one where I put the set time in a second. This is going to end and they'll all close because they've all been pre rendered. Come on. 20 seconds is up. Do it. Do it. Do it. Come on. Are you going to do it? Oh, it doesn't do it on a watch. OK, there's no, a bug. I it's done doesn't close the tabs because yeah, it's never close the server yeah so don't do show browser when you can watch anyway this is how i this is how i develop i do a build watch and a scully watch okay and then anytime i change my angular code or my scully code they'll both rerun all right so i'm actually going to go ahead and, and i'll show you this real quick so if i delete this and i save it my angular rebuilds then my scully rebuilds right so boom all right okay so this is how i develop and then it's also serving it so i can actually check out on the server i can look at my 1668 do a refresh and now with my javascript disabled so javascript already disabled i can click on any of the links on the whole website and they're all pre-rendered so they all just work and i don't have to worry about it okay so every click target on my website is an href so I don't have to care that none of my JavaScript's turned on because I built my website in a way that it still works without JavaScript turned on. But equally, um, I can, if I turn JavaScript on, enable JavaScript, if I refresh, it still works. It's still it's still an Angular app, right? Like no one cares, right? It, it, still, it still does what I needed to do. All right. So I think that we're working. Right? And you can actually see the JavaScript getting downloaded here and executed and stuff. So, so yeah. So this is this is uh, this is working. There's there's only one slight distinction. Like um, when I when I go from this page back to the all page, um, it isn't actually doing a full page load once JavaScript is enabled. But if I disable JavaScript um, and I click here. Every time I click, it's a new full page load, right? Because these are just static pages at this point, right? There's no JavaScript happening. It's not a single page app. It's it's a it's multiple static pages next to each other, right? So anyway, um, you you don't have to build your app to run this way. 
you just need to pre-render this way, right? You just need to look good pre-rendered. You don't actually have to make your app work with JavaScript disabled, but it is, it is a fine goal to have, right? Um, to make your website fully functioning before the JavaScript downloads. Oh, enable JavaScript. Okay, JavaScript's turned back on. All right. Okay, so um, I kind of want to show you if I come back to the to the donuts config. Did anyone have any questions with the donut config? By the way, did anyone need me? Oh, we got questions. Uh, Han, you said we ran ng build. That's the dev build, right? Can we run prod? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can run prod, hundred percent. Yeah. So if I say uh, prod watch and I say dash dash prod, it'll just be a little bit slower. But yeah, you could totally do this. Let's give it a second. It's gonna take quite a bit longer to go. Fanis says, um, "Is it Fanis or Fanis? Maybe you already said this and I lost it, but." Is there a priority on compiled pages versus HTTP calls? Is there a priority on compiled pages versus HTTP calls? I don't understand the question. Sorry, yo. So they think it's if you get the priority for render the page or the HTTP get, get the data. I still don't understand. I mean, we pre. So they think it's not really because uh, Scully rendered the page and saved the page render with everything there. Okay. All right. Yeah, I think the answer is not really. So Yang says, let's say the donut store allows the users to dynamically add toppings to the donuts. Then this feature cannot be pre-rendered, right? No, that's not true. Because um, I could pre-render, I could cache all of the um, toppings. But you're talking, I'm building my own donut, right? Yang, to answer your question. Like maybe I added gummy bears and bacon because I'm nuts, right? Um, like that builder, you're right. That would need to be an Angular app, right? But I could I could cache the donut list and I could cache the toppings list from the server, so I wouldn't actually need to fetch those at runtime. So I could I could pre-render the base page for the builder, but then once you actually start building, that would need to be Angular at that point. So yeah, good question, Young. Um, Pavel, can this be used to achieve uh, the same as Gatsby does? I mean, not to use JavaScript in front at all. Yeah, it can be, but um, a lot of us have a completely different need than that. Like we need to do like what Yang just said. I want to pre-render my donut site, but I also want them to have app functionality like building their own donut, right? And I want them to have a shopping cart. Shopping carts are inherently uh, kind of client sidey things anymore. So yeah, like, you can build it that way, but you don't have to, and you largely don't want to for a lot of it. So yeah. All right. Uh, Young, correct. Thank you, Rich Tillis. Should we think about our Angular modules and organizing our components differently since Scully pre-renders everything? Um, no, because Scully still lazy loads stuff. So you don't have to worry about your lazy loading stuff getting out of whack. Scully's still going to be, it's just Angular. so. Just keep doing what you're doing, Rich, as far as segregating your code out into like lazy loadable chunks that are contextually loading when you want them. Like keep doing that because Scully's gonna load them in the exact same way. So it'll actually speed up your, your angular build to, to keep doing those good practices. Good question. Yang, so in general, the app would look and see if the page has been pre-rendered first. If not, then the app would use JavaScript. Um, no. Because what happens is it loads the pre-rendered version, but then the JavaScript downloads in the background, okay? Once the user's already seeing and clicking and like scrolling around, but the JavaScript downloads in the background. And then all of a sudden the user doesn't even know this happens. If you're building your page right, the user won't see this step. This version will disappear and the Angular version will just pop up right on top of it. All right? That's usually how these work. Now, sometimes, if your app isn't architected well, the user will actually see this one go away and there will be a pause where there's nothing. And then they'll see the new, the angular version of the same thing pop in its place. Now that's not a great experience, right? Like, like this is a fine experience if they're not, if they don't see it, but both of them gone and then the other one turns on, that's not a good experience. It's not a good experience for you. So you need to, you need to work on optimizing how your app loads when you're getting really, really into the Jamstack 
and you're like, wow, we're making money off of loading faster. We're having less abandoned sessions off of being on the client sooner. We're making more money, but we have these weird flashes. Then you now you get to go to the next level deep, which we can talk about a little bit later. All right, good question. Um, all right, so Preston, you said we have 90 minutes left. Is that for the whole entire workshop? Yeah, because we, we end at one and it's 11.45, so, right? Yeah, is this just a half day workshop? Yeah. Oh, boom, I didn't know that. Spread a whole day worth of content. All right, well, let's speed up. All right, I'm gonna show you guys how to do something real quick that I'm not gonna let you do. I'm just gonna show you how to do it. I want you to imagine that I didn't build this JSON plugin for you, okay? So I didn't I didn't give you this JSON plugin that would just does this wonderful fetches to the back end and makes your life easier. I want you to imagine you had to build this on your own. I want to show you how to build your own plugin, okay? It's it's crazy simple. If you can build a function that returns a promise, you my friend can build a plugin, okay? So if you can do a plug, if you can build a function that returns a a a a a um a promise you're good to go so let me let me show this to you real quick um so i'm gonna say function my function my donuts id plugin sorry let's copy that and it's gonna take it's gonna take an unhandled route all right some of you are like, what is an unhandled route? Some of you are like, Frost, don't just wait. Don't hand wave that, yo. What is an unhandled route? This is an unhandled route, okay? This is a route that it's not handled. Like, Scully can't deal with this. This is a route that you need to handle. But what I'm going to do with this function is I'm going to take an unhandled route, this, and I'm going to return an array of handled routes okay so there's some vernacular you got to get a little bit used to you're taking an unhandled route and you're turning it into an array of handled routes all right so let's just let's just let's just do this simple real quick okay return promise dot resolve and we're just going to put an array in here all right and um jorge is it is it route is that the thing is that the property is route so I want you to imagine on this one, I'm going to say donuts slash, let's go back to our API. Three thousand donuts. Let's get a couple of these. Let's get a couple of these real quick. So I'm going to say that, that ID. Oh, I missed the B. Let's get another one. Let's get this one. So we're just gonna take two of them. Okay, so we're just gonna. So when you imagine I did some like fantastical HTTPS rubbish, right? Like I went to the server, maybe I went to a database, maybe I read from the file system. Who knows what I did? But all I have to do is return a promise, okay? Simple. So if I can do this, now I now I, now all I have to do is register my plugin. Okay, so I'm gonna say register plugin, which is the function that comes from Scully. And it's a router plugin because that router plugin is the one that helps you find the routes. I'm going to call it, I can call it whatever I want. I'm going to call it the same thing we called the function as a string. I'm going to pass it the function. So that's all I have to do. All right. So I said, hey, make a function called this that uses this function. So now down here on type, I could just say this. Okay, so now I have my donut ID plugin. Okay, so now if I run, now if I run this, it's not going to render all 49 uh, donut pages anymore. It's going to render only a few of them because it actually didn't have very many pages to render. It's like, hey, I only found four because this plugin only gave me two IDs back, right? So this plugin, it took an unhandled route and it gave me back an array of only two versus going to an API and getting it, right? So let me, So this is the simple version. Now you understand it really is just a function that returns an array of things. 
So let's make the actual version. Return HTTP get JSON. So this is an HTTP get JSON. This is like a HTTP service from Angular, okay? So I'm just gonna pass it HTTP colon localhost 3000 slash donut, sorry. Let me actually look at the code. Let's actually do this real quick. Dot then I think this just gives me my donuts. So I think from here I would say return donuts.map. So I get each donut. And I'm going to return. Remember, I want to return one of these uh, route slash donuts slash donut.id. Okay. So I could do this as well. I think this is basically accomplished in the same exact thing now. So let's go ahead and run this. And just for good measure, console.log donuts. Because I want to make sure I'm doing this right. All right. Let's run this again. Let's clear this. All right, there we go. Okay, so we got them all again. All right. So this is this is how simple it is. So if you can if you can fetch stuff from the server, like we gave you this HTTP get JSON function, right? Super simple. Not a lot went on here. And if you can do this. And return a return a promise that returns an array of these objects that have a route with a route in it. That route, that object that has a route key with the route value in it, that's called a handled route. So you, you give it back an array of those things, and you can build your own router plugin. All right. So if anyone, I'm gonna give everyone, I'm gonna do another five minute break because I want everyone to be able to try this out. I'm gonna leave my code up. All right. So you can try it out on your own machine, okay? Um, you're just making a you're just making a function that takes an unhandled route, and then you're registering that as a plugin. That's all that I really did, and then I put the string that I registered it as as the type for my donuts route, and I'm I'm done. Okay? So I'm gonna let everyone try this out on their own just to make sure it's working. I want you to go into the wild today at work, you know, in your own projects. And I want you to feel comfortable building a function that returns, it takes an unhandled route and it gives you back an array of handled routes. I want, it's such a simple concept, but I want you to get comfortable doing that because that's all you have to do to assist Scully in finding all your routes. It's very, very simple. Uh, I'm gonna answer some questions. So Tobias says, what happens with user input while the JavaScript is being loaded and Angular is bootstrapping? which is not clicks on links. So like what you're asking Tobias is what if there's a what if there's a first name field and that's pre-rendered and someone types in that pre-rendered field they type they start typing in their name T O B and right when they get T O B the javascript loads and deletes that field and puts in the angular version of the same field that's what you're asking. That's a really good question. And those are some of the more advanced things you get to solve when you get when you get fully into Jamstack is you get to say, hey, in the pre-rendered version of my page, anytime someone types in here, I'm gonna put that into local storage. And then when my Angular turns on, this Angular component is gonna look to see if that value is in local storage. And if it is, it's just gonna pull it out and put it into that input. So that, that way, when this one goes away and this one appears, they actually end up with the exact same data. So there is a little bit of gluing sometimes you have to do to glue the two pieces together. But for the most part, it's just Angular. So a lot of the questions about, hey, how do I get data in Scully? Well, however you got it in Angular, that's probably how you're gonna get it in Scully. But when it comes to your question about stitching together the pre-rendered version with the rendered version, there's a little bit of stitching you're gonna have to do. And I can show you that later on. Good question. Okay. Um, all right. Pavel's saying this is awesome. I answered Tobias's question. Um, my wife hears variations of you're the same person all the time and she hates it. Oh, is your wife, uh, she's a twin, Preston? Yeah, she is. Yeah. 
yeah i i'll be like i'll be at costco it was so weird dude this dude i'm at costco and this dude he just gets up into my face and he's high-fiving me i'm just like the hell is happening i don't know who this person is i'm just like hey bro um do you think my, do you think i'm joel i'm aaron by the way uh, you think i'm joel right he's like yeah i'm yeah i thought you were joel I'm like, okay uh i'm not joel i'm there sorry this is awkward but yeah another time i was like in a store with my wife and this guy's like they'll just let anyone in here huh and like i move my wife behind me because i'm like what's happening like this is weird why is this guy coming at me like this and he's like joel calm down i'm like oh all right you think i'm joel i'm aaron i'm not joel anyway okay um okay yeah i'm gonna move on unless anyone says something in the comment like wait a second i'm gonna move on i, I gave enough time so i'm gonna give you 20 seconds to say wait all right while you give them the last 20 seconds i'm gonna end this poll and show the results real quick from the mm. poll one what happened hiking and camping one yep it looks yeah. like hiking and camping one see i would have gone with fishing knowing you like i do yeah Fishing, fishing is is a good one. I mean, at least during the winter. That I definitely would have chosen yeah. that during the winter. Yeah, I ice fish a lot. That's Preston knows this. Uh, I also, I've my family has won a cooking competition on television, just so everyone knows. So the cooking and baking was not far off either. I do like the hiking camp, it's, but I have five kids, and if you have even one kid, you'll know that that camping sucks can buy I mean kids don't make it easier they make it 18 times harder so uh I've got way too many kids hiking and camping's fun ish but you can imagine how hard it is to get one kid to be like yeah I'll go hiking I have five to get all five of them to say yeah I'll hike at the same time it never happens anymore. yeah we went on a hike in Yellowstone this past summer and we were only about 30 seconds in before we had kids complaining about their feet hurting. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, thank goodness I have kids. All right. Um, okay, so sh shall we? Shall we move on? All right, let, let us proceed. Okay. So, um, who did me? Oh, I want to answer this question. Which fictional character would you most want to meet? Uh, I'm not going to tell you who I'm picking. Easy. Mm. Easy? Yes. I will bribe you on Slack. Right. It's going to pop up on my screen. No, well, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, we're going. On. All right. So let me show you something about let, Let's go to our Angular app, the, the, the Angular version. So this is my 4200. This is the Angular site, okay? So I'm going to switch to just XHR requests. When I load my home page, it goes to the donuts API and I know it's the API because it's it's on port 3000, right? If I click this, it's going to 3000. Okay. It's not, it's not pulling. If it was pulling from the same host 4200, then I would know it's a cached asset. But the fact that it's pulling from 3000, I know it's an API call, All right? We're going to cache that call because when I come to the, when I go to the detail on this page, it makes another API call the port 3000, right? So every time you load one of these pages, I'm calling out of the API. I'm like, hey, API, I need more data, which is which happens in every, you know, JavaScript. Anytime the route changes, you're like, data, give me more data. Some of these data calls we can cache and some of them we can't. I'm going to show you how to do something cool when you can cache it. When you can't cache it, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you can cache it, okay? We'll talk about when you can't cache it in a second. I'm going to show you this really cool utility function we wrote inside Scully that allows you to make dynamic calls. You can it will make the call when Scully is running, but it won't it, in production. It will just use the cache version. So let me show you how to do this. All right. So we are going to I've got my build watch over here and I've got my Scully watch over here. So we are going to need to modify our Angular code. All right. So I'm going to open up my donuts dot component all right and if you look at this donuts component it's a very simple component like i mean look it's 20 lines of code and most of it i spread out just because i was trying to make it's it easier to understand but 
you know, all these lines of code should just be one line of code, to be honest. Anyway, so what this is, is it says, hey, this donuts observable is equal to this HTTP get. Okay, so it does, it does the get to environments API base URL. That's the local 3000 and it gets the donuts. So go get the donuts from there and then subscribe to that and say this dot donuts is equal to the response from that HTTP get. Everyone should understand this call, I think, um, unless we're in the intro to Angular course. And if you are, I, I'm going to just gloss over that and I apologize. I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but this is this is one of these. Th you'll do this a lot in Angular. If you're new to Angular, you're going to do this, this HTTP get thing a lot. So um, I'm just going to gloss over because I think most people should know this one. Anyway, so um, we're going to change this slightly. OK, and we're going to use this new service from Scully. It's called transfer state private transfer state and it's the transfer state service okay and it comes in from scully and i'm gonna say const donuts is equal to this dot transfer state and i'm gonna use this function called use scully transfer state now, Scully transfer state takes two, 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 two arguments. The first one is the name uh, in the cache that I'm going to name these variables. So I'm going to take these donuts and I'm going to put them in the cache as donuts. Okay, simple. It's, it's not 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 happening here. Okay, but during the build, I have to give it the observable that I want it to use to fetch the data. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to paste it in here. All right. So now donuts is equal to Scully transfer state, use transfer state. And it's going to use a cache name called donuts. And then it, I just put my HTTP in there. Right. I didn't do anything fancy. So that built. And now this is building over here. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to go back to my home page. Let's go to our pre-rendered app. Okay, so this is our pre-rendered app. If I look at XHR, it's not making XHR anymore on this home page request. It's not making the call out to get these donuts. Okay. It was pre rendered and this is Angular. Like, like, see how I have disabled JavaScript? This means Angular is turning on, but it didn't make an XHR because it, you, it pulled that data out of transfer state. Okay. Let me show it to you in the transfer state. Okay. This is what it looks like in the pre-rendered version of the app. It puts it inside of a script tag and it gives it a key of donuts and then it sets the value into the transfer. So it actually caches the data inside the HTML, right? So that's how the data caching happens. So your page will get a little bit bigger, but it's still much, much faster than if it had to get the page and then make another request for the data. Like it's all kind of in one zipped up piece, right? And it only took one, it only took one line of code. Sorry, let's go here. It only, we only had to modify that one call to get that, that feature. All right. Now I'm going to do this on the donut component. Cause if I come over here, if I come back to my angular app, um, it also makes another call. When I go to like the details page, it makes another one. So I'm going to actually cache this call to it. It's just as easy. So I'm going to come to the donut component. I'm going to bring in that same thing. Private transfer state. Transfer state service. Right? And then we're going to do the same thing. Const donut is equal to this dot transfer state. Dot use transfer state. And the name in the cache, I'm just going to call it donut because it's I'm nondescript and I'm, I, I'm probably your least favorite team member. And I'm going to pull, I'm getting the ID. I'm getting it out of the route. So I'm just going to copy this observable and I'm going to paste it in there and I'm going to comment this out for now. And now this code is going to rebuild over here. Done. Did you rebuild over here? Oh, now he's done. Now this will rebuild. Okay. Cool. So that's rebuilding. All right, done. So now when I come to my app, 
if I if I go to my pre-rendered version, if I click on this and I refresh, sorry, let me go to my network so you can see. Also no XHR. All right. Cool, right? And if we look at the page and we look in this transfer state, it, on this page it cached the donut the data for this donut inside the scale cache. So it's a much smaller page request, right? And then there's a little bit of magic that makes it so that when I go back to this all donuts, it fetches the data that it needed. It fetches the cache data over here. But if you look, it, it didn't get it from the donuts API. It got it from what's called donuts.json. It got it from data.json. And that's just the mechanism that Scully uses behind the scene to cache data for each route. Okay. So now every route will have an index.html and a data.json. Okay. And the cool thing is, though, if you look at this request, it's getting served from 1668. That's, that's from my CDN. That's not an API call. So this call, if it does have to make it in production, it is going to be lightning fast, right? This is, this is cached data at this point. Right. And next time I do a build and redeploy out to the CDN or I clear my CDN and the CDN has to recache it all, this data will get recached in the CDN for the next time. So this is how you can use transfer state to cache some of your data calls. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to leave it up. I'm going to go back to my other to the donuts component. And I want people to take a second and implement this change. All right. And I'm going to highlight on the page the pieces that you need to look at. All right. So you need to look at, you need to do, you need to bring in this thing right here. Sorry. And then you're implementing this piece of code right here, right? I'm drawing, yo. Can you guys see my drawing? Were you guys impressed at how bad it was? Were you like, this is bad. He's, I'm proud of him for not trying it again. Yeah, so that's all you should have to do to make that work on the, um, on the donuts component. Um, Young says, so transfer state is used for optimization. 100% transfer state is used for optimization. That is why we added it. It is to reduce the number of calls um, to your API in production. It is to reduce the amount of technological scaffolding that exists in production because those api calls don't have to get made and it is to speed up your app yep so it's for security for cost because now you're not having to send that data from your server it's gets cached right so it's for cost it's for technological complexity in production and then it is for obviously speed optimization at runtime for your users so yeah so while you guys are writing this i'm actually going to um i'm actually going to tell you an anecdotal story um, there was an error and, 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 and before I tell the story, let me tell you something. Scully isn't actually making your angular app any faster. Okay. I, I, your angular app is just as slow as it was, but it looks faster because it got pre-rendered. But if you think about what's happening, they're seeing the pre-rendered and then your angular app, however fast or slow it is, it takes just as long as it always did to turn on. Can we agree that that's happening? So it's, you're actually not getting, you're, it's not making your Angular app faster. What it's doing is though, it's improving the perception of your site speed, right? And there's two big things that care about that. One is your user, they definitely care. And the other one is Google's tooling that crawls your website and gives you like lighthouse scores and stuff. That also definitely cares, okay? And I'm gonna tell you an anecdotal story. Um, so there's an airport that has like, the team that gets the people off the airplane and to the baggage claim as fast as they can, right? That's one part of the airport's optimization. The other part of the airport's optimization is get the bags off the plane and to the baggage claim. So those are two separate teams and the airport, it was having really low satisfaction scores from the users. People were like, it takes too long. I don't like to do this. The airport's too slow. So the airport, they focus like, hey, get everyone off the plane to the baggage claim as fast as possible. As fast as possible, get him there. And then they're like, get the get the bags off the plane too, as fast as possible, and get him to the front of the airport as fast as possible. They're like, everyone, make it as fast as you can. And they got everyone, the people got to the front of the airport, 
The bags got there as fast as they could. The people still had to wait a little bit because they're able to walk faster than the baggage claim people could get in there. But then um, they still had to wait a little bit. And then they got their bags faster than they ever had, though. And the satisfaction scores actually went down because people were people were like, I had to wait. I didn't like that you made me wait. So the airport's like, OK, dude, we're going to try something stupid. What if I just make them walk more time? So they actually have to walk further. So they're, they're actually going to take just as long as I used to to get here. But the bags will get there at the same time as them. And they're going to think that's faster. And they'll give us good score. So they did. They made people arbitrarily walk extra distance. And then they got there at the same time that the bag people who were hustling, right? A plus score for the bag people. And they were hustling, and then they got there at the same time as their bags, and then the scores went through the roof. So um, the people weren't actually getting there any faster. Like the people were actually getting there slower, but they they liked the act of active waiting. They wanted to do something while they were waiting. They didn't want to just stand there and wait for their bag. And that's what we're doing with Scully. The website's still as slow as it was, right? It's the JavaScript isn't any faster, but they actually see something while they're waiting for the JavaScript to load. So in their mind, it's a much better experience. And our, invariably, we can all agree, yeah, having a website load in one second versus nine, there's no way to compare those two. So yeah, anyway. Diff between NPX Scully Watch and NPM Run Scully Serve. Do I need to rerun any of these when making transfer state changes? The only thing, yeah, when you make, when you, okay. So let me ask you a question, Andres. So, um. When you modify your Scully, your JavaScript, your 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 Angular app, you do have to do a build again, right? So over here, uh, let me get rid of this. On this part in this terminal, I'm actually doing a, um, I've I've got an ng build watch going, okay? And this build watch, anytime I make a change to my Angular code, it just redoes a build. So anytime you, you modify your Angular code, you do have to do another build. And then when you're done, you need to do another Scully build. So if you do ng build watch and then Scully watch, they're kind of ping ponging off of each other and they're both doing a watch. So now that this is all done, this will fire. And so you do, anytime you change your JavaScript code, your, your Angular app, you do need to rerun a build and then rerun a Scully. If you run both of them in build in watch mode though, they just they just work well together so yeah anyway any questions on that can i keep going we good all right let's see the next thing all right okay so we've had this we've had this question come up a couple times let me go ahead and clear out um did anyone need me did anyone have any questions by the way um um does anyone have any questions about this code? Like it's it's not difficult, but I did want you to get an experience using the use transfer state. No? Okay. So I'm gonna show you something pretty cool. Uh, let me clear out this marking. Where are my drawings? Go back to last. Okay. So let's look at my donuts component. Um, this is very simple. I have this, this div. It's got the it's got the donuts in it. It's got an ng4, right? In each ng4, it, it just doesn't a let d of donuts, right? Like everyone, I think, should understand what's happening here. It's this, it's just doing an ng4 over the list of donuts, making a link to them, adding a class to them, uh, the source for the image. It's setting the source for the image back to the server, right? So uh, yeah, like this is what's happening. All right, now. Let's talk about this. Um, uh, what if I didn't want to render this as the pre-render? What if maybe, see this image? What if I didn't want to pre-render the image, but I did want to pre-render the rest of the donut? Can you guys imagine a scenario where you might want to contextually load, you might want to pre-render most of the page, but not a, a certain piece of the page, right? Another example of a part of the page you might want to not load is, Instead of the Twitter button, a lot of websites up here will put a shopping cart, right? And you wouldn't want to necessarily pre-render a shopping cart if you don't know who the user is. So it might make sense to not have the shopping cart as part of your pre-rendered app. 
but then add it once Angular bootstraps. So I'm gonna show you how to do that contextual dynamic loading, okay? So let's do this real quick. Let's go, let's go to our app component. Let's find that Twitter logo. Um, is that the Twitter logo? Yeah, 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 yeah. This is scrolling on Twitter. I don't know why this is on. Scrolling on Twitter. Okay. So this is our this is our um, this is our Scully. This is the Twitter logo up top. So what if I don't want to show this during the Scully build, but I do want Angular to show it? Let me show you a really simple way to do this. All right. So I'm gonna say show logo is equal to not is Scully running. Okay, and is Scully running is a function you bring in from the from ng-lib. It's one line of code. There's a lot to think in about it though. So let me kind of explain this line of code. Is Scully running is a new function I just showed you, right? You can think of it as a helper function for Scully users, for Scully developers. This will return true if I am in a build of Scully. It will return false when you're out in production or when you're on localhost doing development, okay? So I can have it run one way on my localhost or in production and a different way on the Scully build. So if I say, is Scully running? When that's true, I don't wanna show this logo. I do not wanna show this logo when Scully is running, okay? So I've got that here. So show logo is equal to not Scully running. So let's go ahead and implement this in our template. So I'm going to say ngf is equal to show logo. Agreed? So now when we go look at any of our pages, this is going to rebuild, get it done. Then we're going to pre-render everything and I'll go look at the pre-rendered version and you'll see that the um, this Twitter logo won't be in any of our pre-rendered stuff anymore. Okay. So if I come up here to our pre-build app, hold on. So we come in here and I just pick any of my routes. Let's go to the about route, who cares, all right? And we format this. Um, you can just see this thing right here. That is where the logo should be. No, 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 I lied. It should be up here. Yeah, it should be right after this span. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, it is right after this. It's right here, yeah, my bad. It is after this spacer, right? Because if we go back to our component, it's right after the spacer. Yeah, right after this spacer is where that, that anchor would exist. But over here, after the spacer, there's just this comment, right? That's what happens with an NGF. So we've effectively not rendered this. Now let's go over to our app and show what this looks like in production. So if I I'm gonna turn this back down to fast 3G, okay? And I'm gonna do a refresh. So the pre-render doesn't have it there. Then our JavaScript loads and it's there now, okay? Did you see that? Should I do it again? I'm gonna do a refresh again because I, I someone, some of us might've missed it. So it's, now this is the pre-rendered version. And as soon as the JavaScript downloads, that changes and like the app, remember the pre-rendered version goes away and the angular version renders into its place. And that's when this turns on, okay? So that's how you can contextually load stuff, right? Is with that helper function of is Scully running. There's a another helper function that you may need to use. And so I wanna show it to you and it's called is scully generated okay now this function is like is scully running but this returns true if i'm out in production so I, i'm after i'm running in angular but after the scully build already ran does that make sense so sometimes like maybe you want to do this in your analytics stuff because maybe you don't want analytics to happen during your scully build and you only want it to happen once Angular has built. Like I don't really, I don't really know. Like 
it, it's up to you why you might want to use this flag. I'm simply here to show it to you because it's a tool that you might need to know where I'm at. All right. So with these two flags, you have a way to know three things. I'm either running localhost. If both of these are false, then that's localhost. Okay. If is Scully running is true, then I'm on the build machine. Scully is pre-rendering. And if this is false, but this is true, then I'm out in production after the Angular app has bootstrapped. So it's the Angular app has bootstrapped. That will be true. So there's kind of like this new, these new different things you had to consider. So those are your tools. So I want everyone to pick a piece of the app and I want you to show it or hide it contextually based on like what you're dealing with. Like I, I did the, the Twitter logo or the, the, the Twitter logo up top. You can do the entire donut module. You can do an image, but you're just really using this is Scully running function. Okay. Very, very simple stuff. Uh, Alex says, thank you for highlighting that experience. Sometimes I talk to companies and they feel that over optimization is the only way to go. Design helps so much. Um, Alex, so I totally agree with you. And I'm going to give you an example. I want you to imagine. You can't, but I'm asking you to imagine. I want you to imagine your Angular app could somehow be as fast as a Jamstack app. Just imagine it. It can't short of like quantum computing, like quantum internet speeds, like short of that, it's not possible, but just imagine it could. And let me tell you, you could actually get it as fast as Jamstack and it would cost you a million dollars, or you could use Scully and it would cost you, it's open source, it's free, right? So in one scenario, it is as fast as the Jamstack makes it look but it costs a million dollars to get there. And then the other scenario, it's not as fast as Jamstack makes it look. It's Jamstack, but you got it for free. You got it for very, very cheap. Which one would you pick? I don't know. Different customers might have different answers for that. And that's what you kind of have to ask is, um, even if you could over-optimize the hell out of your app and get it to be fast, 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 on a certain level, it might make more sense just to embrace the Jamstack, let performance be what performance is, and then you focus on building more features that you can monetize as a business. So like that's where that's why the Jamstack is so phenomenal. Is it allows you to get crazy light speed performance and focus on still building more user uh, features. All right, Tyler says, so to make that element appear, do we run the build with the prod flag? No. No, 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 no. That's a good question. I'm sorry. I, I, let me let me try and answer it again. Um, and Tyler, that's a great question. I didn't understand. When we started building Scully, I had no idea that, of these problems we were even trying to solve, to be totally honest. I, had, I didn't even understand the Jamstack when we started to build it. So um, this doesn't care if you have your prod flag on or your dev flag or your staging or your QA flag, okay? This is only to tell you um, are you on the build machine? Who cares what mode? Prod, dev, staging, QA, it doesn't care. It's just a flag that says, I'm running on the build machine versus I'm out in production. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So, no, it doesn't read the environment URL. No, no, no. No, no, no. It, it says, hey, Scully, are you there? Because there is, it, it says, hey, Scully, are you there? And in production, Scully's not there. Scully, like it, the, 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 the pre-rendering piece of Scully is not, it doesn't exist in production. So all is Scully running is it says, Hey, Scully, are you here? Am I in you? Am I in, am I in the Scully pre-rendering phase? And if the answer is no, then it says, okay, I'm in production and is Scully running is false. But if, if it is in the pre-rendering, it's on my machine going through the Scully build, then that returns true. So that's all that is. Anyway, I don't think I don't know if I answered your question any better. Hey, Aaron, right. can I jump in right. for just a second? I Please. think I understand what he's saying. So I think um, the confusion is that uh, Scully only runs when the app is built, and so then when the app is being built and that index.html file is being generated, 
that's when Scully is running. So that image is not placed into the index.html file that's created. And then when someone goes to your application, index.html is pulled up and that's what they see. And there's no image there. And then Angular loads in the background and then it puts in all the pieces that should be there. And so that's when the image is entered in um, after after the page loads. So I think, I think that's the difference it, it, for Tyler. Okay, I trust you. I'm not doing a good enough. I, I, I sometimes get too caught up in my explanations and I apologize. All right, so uh, I forgot to show this. Let me, let, me, let me highlight this real quick. For anyone who still wants, is still looking at this, you're just, you're just, come on, draw this. You're just doing this and you're doing this. That's all you're doing is you're using this. If anyone wants more time, go ahead and tell me and I'll wait. But for now, I feel like I'm going to give everyone 20 more seconds and then we're going to keep going. All right. Okay. Um, all right. How much more time do we have, Preston? 30 minutes? 34? Uh, yep, 35. Should we, do a, should we do a short break? Should we do a five-minute break? I, I've been violating the, the short break rules. Let's do a five-minute break. We'll be back here. It's We'll be back here at one after the hour. Is that a deal? No, wait. One after the half hour. All right, so just in five minutes. Anyway, okay. Next, next, go to the next step. Let me pull up my notes. What are we talking about now? All right. Uh, so, only one uh, thing. Yeah. It's a scoded running. Only is true when you, the CI, CD, or run NPN, run scoded. It's in the only moment it's true. Yep. So that's the thing. If you need something in your HTML, that needs to be true. If you put false, this will disappear from your HTML. Yeah. Thank you, Jorge. Um, okay. So let me clear out my drawings. Okay. Um, no, go back to the mouse, yo. Okay. Um, so there's a couple things I'm going to show you coming up quick. Um, I'm going to, we're going to kind of glance over a, a couple of them because there's, there's quite a few topics I still want to cover and we've got 30, less than 30 minutes to do it. So I want to show everyone how we can add blog support to our app. Okay. So if, if you're an Angular developer and you're like, hey, I would like to do blog in Angular. I don't want to have to learn React just to do Gatsby or to do Next. Like I would like to do it in Angular. Well, congratulations, because Scully's here for you now. So let me show you how you do that. There's actually quite a few steps, but we build a schematic to do them all for you. So let me walk you through the schematic. By the way, is everyone ready for me to proceed? Kondra, did you catch up eventually? Like, are you good? Okay, cool, perfect. Okay, um, all right. So let's do ng generate. Okay, so we're gonna use the Angular CLI, and we're gonna say generate Scully IO slash init. So we're using that same schematic we did last time, and we're gonna say the blog. I want you to init the blog this time. I'm gonna run this. And it's gonna create, it's gonna create a bunch of files. In fact, let me let me get this all separated out real quick. Hold on. Um, do this up here, and then I'm gonna make a new change list. And we should call this blog changes. Set it to active. Okay. All right. So here comes our blog changes. Let me run this. Okay, cool. All right. So let's put these up into the blog changes. Okay, so here's your blog files that changed, okay? So it, it created a new blog module. Uh, it modified the app routing module. So let's look at that. So it added basically a blog URL, right? That's all it did. It added that to my to my routes, and so I have four in my app routes. 
I created a blog module, which doesn't have a lot in it. It's just a, it's just a basic module. Has the routing module in there, which this does matter, but it's mostly magical and superfluous to what we're trying to do here. Um, so let me show you what we're doing. Let me show you what we're doing. And then it also created a default blog for us. Sorry. So let me, let me close this. So create here's here's my first blog. Okay. So we're gonna say blog description. Greatest blog in the world. All right. And let's say it's published. Okay. And let's change the title. Goat blog, right? Okay. And we're just going to say enterprise ng blog first blog this is my first blog look ma i finally made it All right okay so here's my uh here's my first blog now um Another thing that it did was it modified my Scully config, and I want to show everyone that real quick. It added this blog uh, section to my Scully config. So this is one of the things you were going to have to do, but the schematic did it for you. All right. So if I, at this point, um, if I rerun my build, um, in fact, did it already do it? It may have already ran it because we're doing a watch. I don't know if it ran it. Let's look. Nah, it didn't do it. All right, so I'm going to kill my build. I'm going to restart my build. And I should restart this. Oh, yeah. I need to kill this one, too. All right, come on, build. Oh, am I? I just realized. Am I still running on my custom plugin? Oh, that's so funny. All right, cool. Just gonna get rid of that. Okay, now we'll run Scully Watch again. We should have a blog route in there. It should go up to 50 routes instead of 49. Uh, do I have to do scan routes? Is that what's going on, Jorge? All right, sorry. Yep. There's one more thing you got to do. It's still Scully to rescan for new routes. When you add new routes, see how it says loading guest parser? Did everyone see how it said that? Where did it go? Did it delete it? Anyway, loading guest parser takes a lot of time, which is why we get rid of it. Anyway, um, now up in my disk folder, I should have that blog. Yeah, so now I have my blog and it looks just like my website. And it says, look, Ma, my first blog, All right? I finally made it. It's got an H1 with my first blog. And then, yeah. It, it didn't change the title to my page, but we can do that in a second. Anyway, so um, I now have my blog. If I come over to my website. Oh, man, I didn't change the slug on this thing. 11, 16 blog. Okay, let's come over here. Blog slash 2020. 11, 16 blog. Okay. So here's my first blog, yo. I got my websites. And it's got my, my markdown in here already. Like it, it it turned my markdown into HTML and put it into the page for me. That's what like the Scully build did for us, right? So pretty cool, I think. I think it's pretty awesome. Um, this blog, this is Scully.io content. Um, that's just the, the blog component. So if I open up 
blog.component. I can actually get rid of that if I don't want it there. And if you look, remember how it says end content? If I don't want that there either, I can get rid of the end content, right? And I can just say, hey, just put the blog content there. And then it can pre-render, rerun, refresh. Okay, so, oh, that's the one with the end content. It's gonna re-render again. Okay, here we go. Now it won't have the end content. Okay, so there you go. All right. So there's my there's my website with my watches going. So this is what your blog can look like. Like you can just make your blog on your homepage. Um, and you can write stuff in Markdown. It's very, very simple. Um, there's there's quite a bit of cool stuff you can do here um but yeah so i kind of want to show you along with the blogging engine there's a there's a service in angular or the in scully that helps you know all of the routes in your app remember how we had to teach scully all my routes we had to we had to do that that plugin that was like hey i take the unhandled donut route and i turn it into an array of that Actually, I can get I can get that list of routes in my Angular app, so I could build like a table of content for my blog or whatever. And I want to show that to you. So let's come back to our code, and let's go to our blog component, and we're going to bring in that new component. Okay, private um, Scully routes, Scully route service. Okay. So here's our, so we brought in the Scully routes service. All right. Now, um, I'm actually going to change this from private. I'm going to change it to public. Okay. And over in our template, we're going to start binding to these, to this Scully routes object. And we're going to get some of the available routes off of it. So let me show you this. So we'll just stay ULLI NG4 let route of what did i call that thing scully routes dot available pipe async right so inside this li i'm just going to have a uh, um route and I'm just going to print out the JSON for the route. Okay. So he builds, he builds, pre-renders everything. So I come back over to my blog, refresh. Come on. Do it again. One more. So I Come on, show it to me. So I have, clearly there's plenty of them. I just wanted to print the JSON pipe for me. Okay, there we go, all right. So there's all the blogs printed out as JSON. So here's, or sorry, here's all the available routes to my app, right? Um, now, if I wanted to just filter down to just the routes that are blogs I could search for something that has a published um, has a published key and if I had a if I had a published key and a title key I, I could I guess I could say that's a blog what what property would you do that on is there is there one just for blogs Jorge is this published let's change this to yes published. Published, published yeah published so if I save this as published, it'll show me just it'll just give me the links to my published blogs. I think yes. Okay, you done? Now you're done. Okay. So there's my published blogs. Really. Why is published not in there, bro? It's 
Uh, just go your routes. Go in here. Uh, it's not published. Uh, Available is all of them. All routes. Available. Available is wrong. Our, our documentation is wrong. This should be more than just. It should be all routes. Available should only have published routes. All right, I'm gonna ramp, I'm gonna make my own published pipe. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Let's go back to my code. Block component. I'm just gonna say blogs is equal to this dot scully routes dot available, which is all of them. Dot pipe, and I'm gonna take just some of the blogs. Routes. Routes. Dot filter. Route dot title. And route dot published is equal to published. All right. So that'll work now. I hit save two times, so this is rebuilding again. What are you mad about? Uh, well, let's see if it worked. For some reason it worked. Okay, cool. All right. There we go. So now I could, I could pretty this up like with markup, and I could instead of just having it like JSON print this to the screen, I could make nice links with a preview of the image to, for the blog, and like I could have like a table of contents for all my other blogs, right? So like I could start to custom my own Angular blog and make it look like whatever I want, right? Anyone here who's watching this, you could take this, mix it with the CSS and the design side of you that's in here, and you can make your own blog, and it's great. So that's what you're looking for. Okay. Fantastic. All right. Next thing. Sorry, I'm just I'm just trying to bump through my notes. I got time for one more thing. So I want to show you one last really, really big optimization you can make. And it's the critical CSS plugin. Okay. And let me just show this to you. So we built this. Um, it uses critical CSS. It uses critical, which was built by Adi Osmani on the Chrome dev team. What this does is when your page loads, it looks at your CSS and says which of this CSS is needed for this page. And then it lazily loads the rest. So it only loads the CSS that you need to paint the pre-rendered view. It doesn't lazily, it doesn't load, it lazily loads the rest. So this is a really powerful thing. So let me show you how you, we use this. So we're going to, we're going to go ahead and install it like this. Okay. Let's go back to our code. Clear. NPM install at Scully IO slash Scully plugin critical CSS. All right. So this is just going to install it so we can use it. And then I want this critical CSS plugin. I want it on all of our routes in our whole entire app. So I'm going to show you how you, how you configure this, this, um, some default renders for every single view on your page. Like I don't want any of my app to load CSS that isn't necessary for that view. Okay. I want it to not include CSS necessary for that view. All right. Beautiful. Okay. So let's go back to our Scully config and we're going to configure this. All right. So I'm going to add this new property default post renders and this is an array all right and then in this array we're going to say critical css come on there we go okay so now i brought it in okay so now Every page is going to pre-render with the critical CSS plugin. Because I added a new Scully plugin, I actually have to restart my watch. 
So now I've restarted my watch. Um, all right. So now let me let me prove to you that this is working. Okay. At the very top of my CSS file, I'm gonna say not a real class. Color red. Okay. This should never appear in the CSS once it gets run through critical. Okay. So if I go just go to my if I go to my local app 4200, well, am I even serving anymore? Let's see if it works. So when I come here and I, if I look at my CSS. Sorry, network. CSS. Like it has that class in there, right? Even though this isn't a class that's ever used. Like this is a frivolous class. When I develop my local host, it's there. But now that we're now that we're building Scully with this, as with the critical CSS plugin, it shouldn't be in my Scully build. So when I come over to this build now, and this page loads. Sorry, let's change that back to online. Um when I look at this CSS, uh, why are you making me look like a fool, bro? Why are you making me look like a fool? Do I need to rerun my builds? So I'm gonna do a build again. I don't know why it's not working. It works, trust me. Is it this thing right here? It is that thing. One second. We should comment this out real quick. See rid of that error. Go dog, go. Okay, now you go. Okay. All right. I'm gonna refresh. Go here. Ugh. Oh wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. That is supposed to be what's happened. But this got lazily loaded. Sorry. I am looking. I'm doing the right thing. I'm just thinking about it wrong. Okay. So if you come over to the head, um, it made a link to this style. It put it put the it put my preloaded styles, all the styles needed for this page, right here. But it stripped everything else out of it. Okay. And then it lazily loaded, it lazily loaded this actual style sheet right here. Okay, so if you look in this in this style right here, it doesn't have my not class in here, but that not class still gets appear still appears in my in my general CSS file. Only that this gets set to um, it, that gets lazily loaded now. So it's lazily loading my, my CSS, but it's inlining all the critical CSS that was needed for this page. What this means is now I can truly just get my page with all the CSS needed, all the pre-rendered UI, and all the JavaScript and the rest, the remain, remnant CSS will download after the fact. So this now we're actually getting to the most efficient and most optimized version of our website by fully adopting like the critical CSS plugin with transfer state, with contextual loading with is Scully running, with um, the pre-rending for all the views that we care the most about. Now we're actually getting into like those specific optimizations that will dramatically change the performance of your website. Okay, so um, so yeah, okay, I guess we're kind of at time. So I think I, I feel like I should stop at this point. Um, though there is, there's only a few, there's only a few things I'd like to show left. If you have questions, we have a Gitter. If you just go to Gitter, Skull.io community, this is a public chat that anyone can join. And our team is on here. You can ask us questions. There's other contributors to Scully that's on here. You can ask them questions. Um, like this is a, this is a really, this is a really healthy place to come ask questions and get help is on the Gitter. Uh, the other place that I would encourage everyone to go is on is on the Angular Discord. If you go to discord.gg slash Angular, this is like the official Angular community Discord. You can come on here and chat. There's like 3,000 people on here now. Um, sorry. 
I don't want to accept my invite again, so let me just launch it. Open Discord. Um, so when you come in here, um, how many is it? Go to Angular. Yeah, the 3,700 now. So there's tons of people in here, and among the many channels, um, among the many channels it has, is a Scully channel somewhere. I swear on everything else. okay so you just really, you can also ask in here you come chat with us in here we'll answer your questions and then the last one is if you follow us on twitter um every monday or every tuesday uh we do an office hours and you can come and join for free ask your questions we'll answer them we'll also announce new features that are coming out so follow us on twitter as well so that's those are the three things i wanted to explain about the community the angular discord the getter channel and then also our that's where we kind of spring all of our So, yeah.